Okay. Can everyone hear me? I'm just trying to check to make sure everything is good for the feed. Oh, it is. Okay, I think we're in now. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Sorry about that little slow start, you guys. Good morning. Um, I've got a little thing up here. i got to try to get this off the screen there. Can I turn those off? Mm, let's keep those off. Okay, so a good morning to everyone and welcome to my channel. Sorry, I'm gonna like be messing with this like top thing because I feel like it looks funny. Um, welcome to my channel. <laughs> Sorry for that slow start. Um, I was having like a little bit of a thing. It, it didn't look like I had started yet, so I was concerned. But then I started seeing someone, people, I saw Angelica's comment and I was like oh wait I must be live if it's feeding me comments now <laughs> so I am here and welcome on this beautiful Saturday morning to a live fall plan with me now <clears throat> you're probably looking at me right now and you're thinking I already know this is not going to be a normal fall plan with me you are absolutely correct so today I wanted to do something a little bit different I know it can get a little monotonous with our planning when we're doing the same things and talking about the same concepts week after week, month after month. And because it is currently, as we are going live right now, the 31st of August and tomorrow is September 1st. You guys, can anyone guess like right now, I'm going to give you a second. What is the theme for today's <laughs> live class? Um, I would love to hear you guys, uh, what you guys think the theme is for today. Knowing that tomorrow is September 1st, and let me tell you, I know that there's OGs out there who are going to get this, because I have briefly mentioned this concept before. Actually, I've done like a kind of like a video semi on this concept before. <clears throat> Let's see. And I know there's going to be a little bit of a delay. So I'm just checking my comments, making sure everything is working out well. Tanya says glamour. No, glamour is not necessarily the, the the theme for today's video. I will give you guys a little bit of hint. If you look at the title of the live, then you are in the right direction. But again, it has to do with September. September. What happens in September? OGs oh, that know me that I really like to do. Or not to do, but like something that happens. I'm going to get like a few more guesses and then I'm like totally just going to tell you because we really need to jump into this because there's a lot of content to cover. But okay, so you guys, September is one of my favorite times of year because what comes out, the September issues of magazines okay so if you guys have been following me for a while which maybe we just have some newbies on today's live which is absolutely fine but you guys will know that i have an annual tradition of going out and getting my 
my September issues of all of my favorite fashion magazines. Now I have, like I said, I've done a whole video on this topic before about how I use the September issues of magazines because I'm not really someone who considers themselves a fashionista. I have dr dressed up to be on theme today with you guys in order to carry out a message today for our planning, our productivity edit that we're going to be doing today. But essentially, I love the September issues of fashion magazines because for me personally in my business and my life, you know, no one is more like, I, I don't think that no anyone is more on trend with like, what's going on in the in the world in terms of not just fashion, but like design and writing and visuals and graphics and marketing than fashion magazines are. So the September issues of magazines are always the issues where a lot, a lot of effort has been put into making sure the best of the best and the newest and most current styles and things are being put out to people. And so I turn to fashion magazines in the September time in order to get a lot of inspiration for the way I'm going to carry my brand and what the trends are in visuals and graphics for the next year for my business. Now, I promise you, this is not going to be a business planning that we're doing today. It is going to be like everyone, it's actually, it's going to be a seasonal planning that we're going to do today. But the theme is going to be this concept that I want to present to you, the idea of becoming the editor in chief of your life and your time, okay? Which is why I've kind of dressed up a little comically like Vogue editor. I mean, I don't, this is not what she wears, right? But I'm just trying to evoke my own version of like the Anna Wintour Vogue editor. And we're gonna be talking about that today. So now I'm actually gonna go ahead and take my sunglasses off because I can't really see what I'm doing with my sunglasses on and put my normal glasses on so we can jump into the content of today's class. And for those of you who are live with me, please make sure to leave a comment. Let me know who you are, where you're tuning in from. If you want to leave a handle like for Instagram, I would absolutely love it if you guys would share that so that we can continue the conversation outside of YouTube. And of course, make sure that you are following me on Instagram over here at Miss Trenchcoat for more of the behind the scenes of my productivity, life, and business. So um, definitely leave me a comment. Let me know who you are. And of course, give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it because like I said, I've, um, you know, I put a lot of effort and content into today's video to present you guys something a little bit new and fresh and exciting in order to help inspire your productivity for the fall season, which is really what I you know, the whole purpose of this, that everything that I do is to inspire you guys to be more productive and to learn new techniques or strategies. So I hope you guys are excited and ready and raring to go for today's class. So let me go ahead and pop in. What are we going to do? Turn to, ooh, I still don't know how I'm going to do this. I have like a slideshow that we're going to be doing. Okay, and going through. So what am I going to do? I'm going to turn to, can I do this? Because you guys have an overview of my desk. Hello. Oops, and you know what I forgot to do? I totally forgot to change the camera settings on here so that it doesn't do that anymore. Because it does this autofocus thing. Turn off autofocus. There we go. Okay, so you guys can see me here. And we're going to go into, let me see if I can go into the slides. Hello. There we are. Okay. But I think you guys are only seeing the slides. Okay, we're going to have to leave these. Hold on, let me move this over here. Hmm. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to go with, you know what, I'm gonna go in and out of full screen of the slides because I hate that they're like little like this, okay? So let's go ahead and go into full screen and that's what we're gonna do. Oh, I can even get a preview, how nice. Oh, wow, you guys, I'm using this like new software to stream that I've been using for the last couple of times and it like still really trying to learn it. So, okay, so 
Welcome to today's live class, The Productivity Edit. And this class is all about teaching you how to curate the next season of your life and to edit ruthlessly. Because I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes feel like when it comes to my productivity, I'm always trying to do more and more and more and do the next thing. And I put on a lot on my plate, but I don't always do the best job of editing down what I want to work on, what I want to focus on in order to create that overall life vision that I want to have for myself. And ultimately, that's the point for me of productivity and planning. And I want to hear in the comments from you guys how you feel about this idea and how you been feeling about your planning lately and if you feel like you could use an edit to your productivity as well. Um, So that is what we're going to be talking about today. And again, like I said, September issue of magazines were my inspiration for today. So that is what we are talking about. Now, I want to give you guys a little bit of a story time, okay? And I'm sure some of you have heard this story from me before. So forgive me if this is being repetitive. I don't really think that this is a very unique story, honestly, because I think there are other people who've had this exact same thing, the same situation that happened to them. But essentially, um, it was at one point my dream to run my own magazine, okay? So when I graduated college, I was thinking, I want to start a magazine or I want to work for a magazine. I want to run a magazine one day. But I lived kind of in the middle of nowhere at the time. Like I didn't live in New York City. I didn't live in anywhere where there was a strong metropolitan area where there might be magazines and things like that. So I did the next best thing, which was I started a blog because to me, the idea of having your own blog was kind of like being an editor, kind of like running your own magazine. So that is how my blog started and ultimately like my business in terms of why I'm even sitting here with you guys today, because I wanted to run my own magazine. Okay, so. The editorial, talking about editorial inspiration, the editorial style of magazines are a major source of my design inspiration. So I I think you guys can tell when you look at like my graphics and, you know, my Instagram and even my videos, I have what I would like to think cultivated a, a very editorial style, which is a little bit of minimal like black and white with like a little flair of edgy, right? So like that is the style that I feel like you see in fashion magazines. And that is the style that has really carried through into my branding and really not just my branding, but my entire like life has this sort of style. Like in my home, if you guys have ever seen pictures of my office, even the way that I dress is what I would consider very in line with this sort of editorial style, a little bit of a simplified minimalism, but nothing too um, intense. I don't really use a lot of colors or things like that. I'm really more about kind of cultivating just like a look, a style for myself and my life and my home. And that seeps through, like I said, to all areas of my life. Now, in terms of the fashion magazines, September is considered the January of the fashion year, right? So September starts, the September issues of magazines start that fall, um, start the fall season and fall fashion is considered like New Year's in the fashion industry, right? So what I want to do is tap into that energy of the new year here, stepping into the fall, which a lot of people also consider like the back to school, back to work season. And I want to use this as our inspiration to propel us into designing the life and the plans that we want to embody for the next season of our life. So that is what we're going to do in today's video. September, it's the new January now, okay? So in today's class, we're each going to assume the role of editor-in-chief of our lives. Like I said, like this was like a role that I wanted to play for myself. I thought like quite literally, like I wanted to be like an editor of a magazine. Um, But through my through years and years of experience at this point, I've come to find that everybody can be playing the role of editor in their life. In fact, I think everyone should be the editor of their life to some extent and specifically should be the editor of their energy and their time management and their productivity. So we're going to follow the structure of a real magazine in today's class in order to guide the seasonal planning that we're doing today. And we're going to intentionally curate and edit down the projects and priorities that get our focus for the fall season to ensure that we end the year successfully, right? So we're going to get really focused today 
we're going to follow this productivity edit structure that's going to follow through to um, it's going to follow kind of parallel through the parts of the magazine so that we can really embody this role of being the editor-in-chief of our life. Okay, so what you will need for today's class. So number one, make sure you have your planner. If you've got a Charmed Life Master planner, that would be ideal. But actually, we're not going to be physically in our planners until the end um, of the class. So that's not as important as having something like a notebook and pens and pencils and markers. Um, if you have any magazines um, or and scissors and like tape or glue, we're going to be doing a little bit of like a workshop in today's class in order to, again, curate that vision for what we want to see in our lives for the fall. And you can also go ahead and follow along with the activities um, through the activity worksheets that I have created for this class. I actually ended up putting together a PDF workbook called the Productivity Edit that's going to walk you through this entire process that we're doing in today's class and is filled with worksheets that you guys are going to see me filling out as we go through as well. So the link to the workbook with the worksheets inside is available in the link below. Go ahead and grab that if you want to use the beautiful workbook that I've put together for today's class. But if not, no big deal. You don't need this workbook. You can follow along with a notebook and your planner and some pens and do the activities on your own as well, okay? So I would like to make a quick note before we begin, which is that time is a construct. So if you're watching this class at some point in the future and it's not like about to be September when you're watching this, um, keep in mind that this class and the activities that we're about to execute on can be done at any time. And in fact, I want this class to be something of a resource that you can continue to come back to season after season and follow through and do these activities and get inspiration because these are activities that personally have been very helpful to my life and my planning and, you know, bringing into fruition and manifesting things that I want to see happen in my life. So time is a construct. Do not worry about when you're watching this. If you're not with me live, no problemo. You can listen to this at any time. Okay, so let's start with the concept that you are the editor-in-chief of your life because you absolutely are. Now, I want you to think about this. An editor of a magazine is responsible for curating the vision and outcome of an issue. Like, that's the role of the editor of a magazine. So they start with a vision for the issue, right? And they communicate and refine the concept with their staff, like the people who may work with them. And then they edit everyone's work to ensure that the desired outcome is reached, okay? So this is, in a nutshell, what a magazine editor does, right? So, you know, just being very general here, I know that they do a lot more, of, like a lot of other things, but generally speaking, this is the role that we're going to be stepping into. So when it comes to doing this work, it means that they are not only working towards the outcome themselves, right? Because an editor is also doing some work as well. Um, that's, you know, maybe their own work that they have to do. But they're also constantly evaluating and editing the progress towards their outcome, okay? So they have to balance two key roles. They have to do work. And they have to judge the work of others and edit the work of themselves and others to ensure that no matter how many people are working on an issue, that the issue is still going towards the outcome that they have set out and communicated and put into vision. Because I think we've all had experiences where we know that, um, you know, especially when you are doing anything in your life, this goes beyond work or projects, projects like a magazine or anything like this. When you are going to accomplish something, right, if you have other people involved, even yourself, right, it's so easy that when you're getting into the nitty gritty of doing the work that you forget about the big picture vision of what the actual result and outcome is that you want. So a lot of times we can get like very caught up in a lot of details and even go off track very easily from our vision and do a ton of work. And then we realize at the end of it, oh my gosh, I've done a ton of work on the entirely wrong things. Like I totally lost set, sight of what my end goal was. And now I either have to like 
start from scratch, you like scrap this work. Or I think what a lot of us end up doing is just accept the results that our work has given us. And really, I think that's when we start to get dissatisfied with the way that our lives are going, right? Because we know that each one of us are putting in time and effort into making our goals and the dreams for our life a reality. Like, you know, I know that sometimes when you use the words goals and dreams, a lot of people like think of like really big things um, that seem more concrete, like a goal to become an editor or, you know, to go to school or, I don't know, start a business, make a million dollars, whatever it is. But Every day we are making choices and doing work that is ultimately shaping the results of what we see in our life. And when we don't stick to a big picture vision of what we want, because usually we haven't defined it, or even if we have defined it, we have not done the good job of judging and editing to ensure that we're always in alignment with that vision. What ends up happening is we end up with a result, outcomes around us, a life that we're living that, yeah, you put in the work for it, but you didn't edit enough to see the results that you wanted. So you might not be fully satisfied with your life. You might still have gaps that you want to achieve. And it all comes down to the fact that you put in effort, but you did not make sure that that effort was always in line with the direction you were headed. So this way of working, I think, right, the way that the editor works of having to do work and also judge work, is probably a contrast to the way most of us manage our time and manage our work. So some of us may start with some goals and intentions. Like I said, I think many of us do set goals and intentions. If you're in my community, you've heard me talk about it so many times that I'm sure you do do it um, on a monthly or in a quarterly or a seasonal basis or a yearly basis. But as your months progress, we become preoccupied with doing the work, right? And often forget to edit the work by evaluating and adjusting our plans to ensure that we remain on task. Now, also I think what can end up happening to us is that new things pop up, right? And that happens to everyone. New things will pop up into your life. And instead of creating boundaries by saying no or by delegating new things that pop up or deferring new things that pop up, We will fit these new objectives into our plan as though we have to, and then we end up cutting corners against our original intentions, right? So if if that resonates with you so far, if either of these resonate with you, I definitely want to know. I definitely want to hear about it. Um, But I I can definitely say that, you know, even with my own planning and my own life, I will start with the best of intention to work on a project, move towards a goal, and then new things will pop up and I will spend time working on those things thinking that I need to fit them in because I like the idea and I completely forget that I need to step into the role of editor of my life and set boundaries in some way by, you know, saying no if it's something that I really don't need to be doing, um, by delegating, maybe it is something that needs to be done. I think a lot of times we take on extra work because we see that it really should be done or we really like the idea, But taking on things and not delegating or not deferring things for later ends up overwhelming us so that we are doing less quality work on the original goal, right? Because we all only have 24 hours in the day, right? We only have seven days in a week, right? Time is a construct, but we still only have a certain amount of time. It doesn't expand or contract based on the amount of things that we want to do, right? So We have to be very good editors of our own life to be able to set boundaries and say, you know what, this is not in line with the work that we want to do. And a lot of times it's very hard. I don't know about you, but um, I find it hard for myself, like after I've done work, even if the work isn't in line with what I wanted, I find it hard to edit it because I feel like emotionally attached to it. You know, it's like, oh, I did this work. I put in all this effort. I don't want it to go to waste. But the truth is, is that sometimes you do need to just edit something out. Sometimes you do need to like trash a whole project because it's not taking you to the destination or the outcome that you wanted and spending any more time on it or integrating it into your life like isn't doing you any favors. Um, Another situation I think that we fall into is that, you know, as we're doing work, right, as we're moving towards our plans, very often we get tired, right? We lose motivation, and instead of holding ourselves accountable and taking responsibility, we become apathetic to our original intentions. How many times have you guys ever done that, where you started on something, maybe you've had a lot of gusto, but then you ran out of momentum, you ran out of motivation, and then you really just started half-assing it, right? 
or if you did not stop entirely, right? Because sometimes I will find that I've petered out all my energy and I just stop entirely and go, mm, okay, I'm not into this anymore. Let me go to the new shiny thing that I want to work on, right? Um, or at the very least, if I do force myself to, you know, to power through it, right? I'm not doing the best quality work anymore because I have no energy. I've already spent all my energy. I've got no energy <laughs> to continue going towards that original vision that I had. Now, essentially, most of us are used to playing the staff role, I think, right, in terms of what, you know, an editor-in-chief, that whole that whole analogy is going towards. You know, I think a lot of us are used to doing the work of getting the job done, but not stepping into the role of editor and evaluating and editing the outcomes that we're producing. And that's why being an editor actually is very hard, because not only are you doing work, but you also have to make the really tough decisions and calls that say, you know what? I don't like the way this is going, chop it out, right? And we all know that like pruning is a very important part of growth and of life. If you think about like literally pruning a tree, um, you know, you may, or if you are someone who has plants or things like that, if you're familiar with anything that has to do with growing <laughs> plants or foliage or anything like that, you know that a very important part of growing beautiful flowers and, you know, trees and things like that is pruning them regularly. They have to be cut back. They have to be refined. And in that process of cutting out the excess, right, what you're actually doing is giving the plant the ability to direct its energy and resources to places that are more important, right? Because if you just let a tree grow wild or you let a plant grow wild, all of the energy that it's getting, all of the absorption of the sun and the nutrients and things like that are going to be spread out like on a thinner level across all of the plant and that can make the plant or the tree weaker overall. So it is your duty as someone who is, you know, growing plants or things like that, ideally to make sure you're pruning things regularly, pruning, you know, dead branches, you know, things that aren't looking the best because there's no point in allowing the plant to put its energy towards areas, right, <laughs> of itself that are not going the way we've intended or not following the plan or just not the best use of their time, right? So that is why being an editor is so tough is because we have to kind of acknowledge that and cut the cut the fat, right? And that's hard to do as human beings, I think, for us. So what does it mean to be the editor-in-chief of your life then? So we've kind of gone through what the magazine editor does, um, what I think is the normal way for most of us to approach our work and our productivity. But what does it mean to take on this role of editor-in-chief? Like, why am I dressed up today like Anna Wintour? <laughs> and so for me, I think that it means recognizing that you and you alone have the ultimate power and authority over the outcomes you achieve, the good outcomes and the bad outcomes that you achieve, right? So if you're looking around at your life right now and you're like, oh, I have these goals and dreams, but I keep not getting what I want, right? You are the one who has power over affecting those outcomes, right? So you have, through action or inaction, through excitement and energy or through apathy, one way or another, created the situation that you're in. So you are the one who is in control, and as soon as you need to realize that first and foremost, right? So that's what it means to be the editor. It means that you are the one who has the ultimate power and control, okay? And the way that you control those outcomes is constantly curating and editing what you do, how you spend your time, and what gets your focus, okay? So it means that you will set the vision and expectations for your outcomes. Anything you think you have to do or is an expectation, okay? So anything that you think, you're like, oh, I should do this, I need to do this, I think this is something I need to do, that becomes an expectation that you have control over. So you should only live by your own expectations and never the expectations of others. This is like such a really big point. And I know that I feel like I talk about this a lot, the idea of taking responsibility for yourself and making yourself the number one priority and setting boundaries against anyone else. Um, because I know a lot of times, and I know that in my audience specifically, a lot of people have other people to rel that rely on them or that they're responsible to. But ultimately... Um, you are the one who says what you should be doing and how you should be spending your time. So no matter what you've got going on in your life, if you've got, you know, spouse, children, pets, a job, um, family members, things like that who are telling you what their needs are, you are the one who controls 
how you interact with those expectations and whether or not you are going to put your attention and energy into those things. So when you realize both of these situations, both of these truths, that number one, you have the ultimate power and authority in your life and everything that you've got going on for you right now, good and bad, is a result of what you've done or not done. And you realize that you are the only one who can set the expectations for yourself, right? The world will tell you what to do every single day, every hour of the day, every minute of the day. Someone will tell you what to do, but you are the only one who who can really set your expectations for yourself. You've got control over those expectations, no matter how hard you think it is to say no or push back or set boundaries. So once you realize both of those truths and really step into that, you can step into the ultimate role of editor of your life. And it's only through realizing those things and stepping into that role of authority that you are going to start seeing the results that you want to see in your life. I absolutely promise you that because once you can realize that and really understand it to your core, then you will start to see that things are going to happen for you that are in line with what you want to happen, not just the things you've been accepting. Okay, so how do you develop the self-discipline necessary to step into this role because make no mistake, the role of being an editor-in-chief of your life requires self-discipline. I know that we're constantly spoon-fed this idea in the world that things can be easy. Things can be super easy. You don't have to do the work, right? Like shortcut this, shortcut that. And yes, there are some shortcuts and there are things that can be easy. In fact, I often think that things are a lot easier than they're hyped up to be, right? When you just buckle down and get the self-discipline to do things, I find that fear is the thing that makes something seem like it's hard or seem like it's scary or seem like it's impossible. But when you actually do something for the first time, you notice, wow, that wasn't that hard. Have you guys ever, and I would love to hear in the comments from you guys, if you would like to share a situation or an example Have you ever been afraid to do something, really scared to do something? You're like, oh, this is going to be so hard, so hard, so hard, pushing it off, right? And then you finally do it. And then all of a sudden, what ends up happening? You're like, wow, that was much easier than I expected it to be. Like I overhyped that to no end, right? So really, once you develop the self-discipline to actually do things and actually like fight the fear, you'll absolutely find that things are easier, um, but it still requires you to develop that self-discipline. Okay, so how do you develop that self-discipline that's necessary to step into the role of editor-in-chief, okay? Number one, by prioritizing your needs as often as possible, okay? So you need to start nailing the basics in life in terms of your sleep, your self-care, your nutrition, et cetera. There's a reason that I constantly talk about things like having a good sleep schedule, waking up at the same time every day. Like there's a reason that I am telling you guys about self-care, and the importance of really nailing the basics in your life. I know I don't personally talk about nutrition because I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that, but I am constantly telling you guys about these things that are very basic. And I'm sure to those of you on the other end of the screen, you're like, oh, she only talks about the same things over and over. You know, I've already tried that. What's the next thing I need to hear about? That reaction, that thought process is totally detrimental to your end goal of productivity. Because if you do not nail the basics, right, the basics, right, those fundamentals are the most important things that you need to do every day. Like you need to be nailing them every day. Think about someone who gets very good at anything, right? Like, let me just think really quick. Okay. Um, Okay. I don't know why, for whatever reason, the example of Michael Phelps, the swimmer, came into my mind. He's often brought up in terms of examples for people who have very good self-discipline. Um, and I think that the idea of athletics is something that I think we can all see the clear benefit to habits and routines in, right? Okay, so Michael Phelps, right? He is a great world-class Olympic swimmer. I don't know if he still swims. He's probably getting old now. He's like my age. But he is someone who... Um, you know, when he's doing his swim routines, right, when he's practicing, right? Number one, he won how many Olympic medals and you know the guy is still practicing, right? So there's never a point he's going to reach where he is like, oh, I've learned everything there is to learn. I've done everything there is to, to do. I don't need to do the fundamentals anymore. 
Absolutely not, right? Every day when he does his training, I guarantee you he starts with a routine of all the fundamental basics of all the moves, all the stretching, all of what I don't know a lot about swimming. So this is maybe not the best example for me to be giving uh, examples of. But, you know, I'm sure there are moves. I'm sure there are techniques. I'm sure there are regular practices that people who are professional swimmers, people who are like, I guess not professional, but competitive swimmers, right, um, are doing, right, in order to warm themselves up, in order to build up a momentum so they have the energy to then be competing at a higher level, if that makes sense, okay? So that is the same when it comes to your self-discipline in terms of your productivity, right? If you are not nailing the amount of hours of sleep that you need every night, your your productivity is like never going to change. It's only going to decrease, right? The, the, the less sleep that you get, the more your productivity is going to be a hot mess, right? That's just facts, right? So you need to prioritize your sleep. You need to prioritize self-care, right? Actually taking care of yourself, making sure you're eating regularly, getting enough, you know, the right nutrition, um, that you're eating the right foods, that you're, you know, seeing the doctor, making sure that you're in health, in a healthy, um, you know, position in your life. You need to make sure that you are regularly moving your body so that you can generate energy and things like that, right? Without those basics, and and it takes a lot of self-discipline to do those basics day in and day out. It really does take a lot of self-discipline. If you're not nailing those basics, that's like the warm-up to you being productive for the rest of the day. If you don't do those, you're never going to increase your productivity. Like your productivity is not going to just grow without you working on the things, the basic things that help you to cultivate and curate your energy. Just point blank, okay? That was a really long little diatribe I went on there. But I think it's very important for some of you guys to hear who might be thinking, oh, self-care is not for me. Oh, it doesn't matter about my sleep. I, I'm trying to wake up earlier and earlier and getting less and less sleep, right? People who are just like neglecting things like meal planning and meal prep that could really be helping them save a lot of time and helping their energy, right? I know that, I know that there are those of you out there who are coming to me looking for more advanced strategies. And what I'm telling to you is your productivity is not going to advance until you've nailed the basics every single day. Like it's not an option. It's not like you can just do it for a year and then it's like, okay, I'm good. (laughs) You have to keep doing it. So how how else do you develop this self-discipline? Okay, so by sharing the responsibility for the workload that you've got, okay? So you can't do it all alone. So you need to utilize your resources, but also take responsibility for your part. I think that a lot of people like completely forget when they're like, going moving towards like goals and dreams they think that their goals and dreams are like only their own only their own responsibilities etc right um if you're out there and you have um i don't know like a spouse and children and a home right and you are someone who is setting the goal to like start a business right start a side hustle or maybe you want to go back to school so that you can get an advanced degree so that you can become a doctor right or a lawyer or you know whatever other an engineer whatnot Don't you think that the people in your life are going to benefit from that goal? Like, it's not just you that's going to benefit from that goal. And it's not, um, that's probably the reason, right? They're probably the reason that you are also motivated to go after this goal. It might not just be yourself. You, of course, want it, but you probably also want it for the people that you love and are close to you in your life. So then why then shouldn't you reach out to them in order to help share the workload that is going to change, to redistribute the workload that's going to change now that you are focusing on something else. If, you're, if you've ever gone to school, I mean, I never went back to school, right? But I can totally imagine as like an adult woman right now, knowing what I know about how college was for me, if I now was going back to school, it would totally change my schedule and my life. And therefore, the people in my life who rely on me, right, and I rely on, right, for support, Art would absolutely need to help me and get on board with this in some way. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go to my classes for me and do my homework for me. No. But what I am saying is, is that when something in your life shifts, in order for the rest of your life to remain balanced, people might need to step in and help each other out. Like, that's the point of, you know, living in community, like having, you know, a spouse, having a family, right, is so that we can support each other towards these goals that might be personal to us, but are ultimately going to help the rest of the people around us as well. 
So I know as women, it's often hard for us to share the responsibility and the workload. It's hard for us to ask for help, but we absolutely need to do it if we want to be successful with those goals. Because when you are working towards a goal or an objective, that goal or objective needs to be a priority to you. And that means that because we don't have that ability to expand time, um, we only have the same 24 hours in a day, it means that if we want the basics to get done or certain things to get done, we need to shift responsibility to others and ask for help. Right. This is the same way like Anna Wintour is not creating Vogue magazine on her own. She has a staff to do this. Right. She's doing a lot of work. Absolutely. I would I would venture to guess that she does the most work actually um, for the magazine. But she, you know, is not alone. She can't do it alone. And we need to start recognizing that and asking for help and actually stepping up and stop being people pleasers. Because if you want to be the editor in chief of your life, if you want to have a life that is worth living to you. Um, You have to get other people on board with your goals. You have to be a leader, really, in your own life. Okay, so what's the next way that we develop self-discipline? Is by limiting who and what gets access to your attention. So people, projects, media, your own mind start setting healthy boundaries. So again, I feel like this is a problem that a lot of women have, including myself, right? I'm not talking about anyone else here except for myself, really, in terms of this, and I've seen it with other people as well, is that... If you don't limit who and what gets access to your attention, um, if you don't start setting boundaries with people, then it's very easy to give all of your energy away from everybody else and have no energy left at the end of the day to work on the things that are important to you. Essentially being a people pleaser, like you know whether or not you are a people pleaser. If that's you, then you absolutely need to start setting healthy boundaries with people. And that may start with having some tough conversations, but you can't just, you don't have an unlimited amount of energy every day. And if you're going to make the vision for your life happen that you want, you have to start, you know, divesting some of that energy towards the things that matter to you, okay? So you need to start uh, limiting who and what gets access to your attention. And this is not just people who might be like, time sucks or things that like, you know, take your, who ask you for things that, and you know, people that you are responsible to or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not just that. It can also be media, right? It can be if you're someone who sits around watching TV a lot or um, you are someone who is maybe like you're on social media and you're wasting time that way. And it's not even just the time waste because sometimes you can go on social media and like like this happens to me a lot. If I open my phone and I see like a news story that like ticks me off, I'm, oh my God, I'll be thinking about it for the rest of the day. You know, so sometimes I have to just like, if I really need to focus, I need to avoid things that might really suck my attention in, right? Inadvertently, because sometimes we don't even set out to be like, hey, I'm just going to sit on the TV, watch the TV for like hours on end, right? That's not what is necessarily the problem. I think the problem is sometimes there are things that trigger us to basically divert attention away from where our initial focus is. Maybe it's something we see that like angers us, upsets us, whatever, It could be news that you get. It could be something someone says that you just keep running through in your mind. And that ends up sucking our energy. So there's a lot of things and a lot of ways that you could be wasting energy. And that I know we're all wasting energy throughout the day that we need to start recognizing what those patterns are so we can cut them out, edit them out, okay? So I want to, because we've already brought her up a few times, Let's let's use the often stereotyped example of Anna Wintour for what it means to embody this editor in chief idea in our life. Okay, like I said, she's a st- she's really just become a stereotype. I have no clue. Don't know her. Never met her. Have no clue who she is in real life. How she is in real life, but she definitely has an image or brand that a lot of people is notorious. Is notorious. Okay, we've all seen the Devil Wears Prada. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, First stereotype, I guess I would say of her that I think that we should all admire is that she's not afraid to ask what, for what she needs to get her job done. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen that documentary that was done about her and Vogue magazine. It was called The September Issue. It came out like maybe 10 years ago at this point. But, you know, from that documentary and from other things that have been said about her, if you're someone who follows, you know, fashion and magazines or whatever, you may already know the stereotype that, you know, well, this isn't a stereotype. It's kind of a fact. Vogue magazine is what they call the most expensive book in the business, okay? So book as in magazine. She runs the most expensive magazine ever, um, and 
it was not always that way. Vogue was not always the most expensive magazine to run. She turned it that way. So she basically set the standards that this is what she needed in order to run a wildly successful magazine and to create a wildly successful brand around Vogue. And she needs a really big budget to do that. Like she needs lots and lots of money to do over the top photo shoots, to get the most beautiful pieces, to travel around the world, to do the most exciting things, to get the best writers, the best photographers, the best of everything which means she's not afraid to ask for what she needs to get her job done, right? Like, could you imagine like someone hired her and they were like, uh, she was like, hi, um, I'm going to need like a $10 million budget this year. And they're like, whoa, whoa, the budget was always 500,000. Yeah, that was to do like this editor's work. If you want me and what I can do for this magazine and where I'm going to build a gigantic brand around Vogue, This is what I need, right? So she's not afraid to ask for what she needs to get the job done. And ladies, like I know that we all have trouble with this, right? I know that I struggle with this too. I hate having to ask people for things, right? But if it's something you need to do the best possible job, you should absolutely ask for it. Even if no one, someone doesn't give it to you, right? Like maybe someone doesn't give it to you. Maybe one year she asked for, uh, you know, a budget and they go, no, we can't do it this year. You have to make do with this, right? Fine, but at least she had the kahunas to like ask for it right like she was not afraid to ask for what she needs to do her best job to show up for her life and do the best work she can do so what are you not asking for in your life for getting your best job done for you being the best person like what are you not asking for and I'm sure there are things that you're thinking about right now and you need to write these things down because you need to start asking for what you need okay next she knows how to delegate and make decisions okay so obviously we already kind of talked about the idea that she you know runs a staff essentially so she knows how to delegate to her staff right I'm sure there's like a meeting that they have for every issue to kick off every the creation of every issue that they're doing and she is gonna she they she outlines what her vision is for what it is gets other people's input and then she delegates work like hey you you're gonna work on this story and hey you you're gonna work on this photo shoot and hey you you're gonna work on this right She knows how to delegate and she knows how to make decisions, right? She does not dilly-dally. She makes decisions very swiftly and sometimes it's apparently very harsh, right? Because she's got a very like harsh reputation. I would, I would venture to think that she might not actually be as harsh or uh, as harsh a person as people think she is. But a lot of times when you make decisions, you're the kind of person who's not afraid to make decisions and makes them quickly and just says, I'm very decisive doing this, Right. It does come off as harsh to some people, absolutely. But the importance of that example, right? I think a lot of us, when we're faced with decisions, think about it, you're faced with like hundreds of decisions every day. You just might not think of all of them as decisions. But I think a lot of times we're worried when it comes to making a decision about making the wrong decision, okay? I'm faced with these options. What if I take the wrong route, right? Let me just tell you this right now. I have never seen and never experienced personally Someone who took the wrong direction, right? And it really ended up being as bad as not making a decision as all at, at all. I think that not making a decision, right, is the worst decision that you can make. Being afraid of your decision is the worst decision you can make. Let me tell you that you can take a horrible situation, right, <laughs> or a horrible choice, right, and you can spin it any way you want as long as you go full force to that direction, right? Right? I think a lot of times in life, there really, I mean, I personally live by a motto that there is nothing that is either right or wrong, but thinking makes it so. That is a famous quote. I can't remember who said it or where it came from right at this moment, but there's nothing either right or wrong, but thinking makes it so. So number one, the idea of not making decisions, being afraid to make decisions, again, out of fear, not because something is too hard necessarily, because once you start doing things, you find that it's not actually hard, but out of fear of, of making the wrong decision, right? There is no right or wrong, right? It's all about the way you spin it. It's all the way, you know, people view that decision. Like, honestly, I know it's like, sounds terrible, but like, I could probably play devil's advocate for like any decision you could make in your life, right? Even if it's horrible, I think we can find positives for any negative and you can find negatives in any positive, right? You're never going to find a decision or an outcome that pleases everyone. So again, you need to please yourself. You need to create the outcome that is in line with what you think is best. And I will tell you this from experience. If you're working towards a goal, if you're trying to accomplish something and you have this passion or fire in your belly, you've got this vision that you're working towards. Um, 
that wasn't just put there by you, right? Like there's a greater plan at work here. And so if you do the thing, if you take the time to make decisions, not avoid making them, but make decisions, and you think about them for a moment, And use whatever your thought process is, however you like to make decisions. I mean, if you trust your gut, you can do that. If you feel like you have to feel things out with your emotions, you can do that. If you're the kind of person that needs to be logical, do that. Whatever the way is that you make decisions. If it's a pro-cons list. Sometimes I make pro-con lists. (laughs) Um, However you make those decisions, right? If you go through that process and you come to an answer, that answer is the right answer for you, no matter what. I 100% firmly believe that. Even if it ends up leading you to a, an outcome that you're like, oh, this wasn't what I wanted, right? Fine. You can always adjust course, right? But there is no wrong decision that you could really make when you're actually making a decision. The wrong decision is always not making decisions because not making a decision is a decision to just delay um, and just letting fear rule your life, right? So you're never going to develop self-discipline with that attitude. So she's not afraid to delegate, not afraid to make decisions. Sometimes it can seem harsh because when someone makes a decision quickly and is absolute about it, that can be harsh to people, right? But when you're the editor-in-chief in your life, the underlings can complain, I guess, but it doesn't matter because they're not living your life, (laughs) okay? So next stereotype for Anna Wintour is that she's not afraid to change direction in a project if it's not aligning with her vision. I think this is something we hear about a lot. Um, They they, they covered this a lot in that documentary. If you guys have never seen the September issue, it's a really good documentary. Um, And even if you're not into fashion, like I said, I'm not really into fashion, but I'm into like editorial and I'm into magazines. Um, So I... In that, in, that, in that documentary, there are lots of examples of like, people have done all this work, done all of these expensive photo shoots, and she's like throwing stuff out. She's like, no, we're not doing this. Like cancel this whole thing. Or if you've ever seen Devil Wears Prada, the Miranda, I forget her last name, but the girl who's supposed to, the late, you know, Meryl Streep, who's supposed to be like the Anna Wintour knockoff, is like, oh, get rid of all this. And people are like, I did all this work. And she's like, don't care. It's not aligning with the vision. It must go, Right. So we can't be afraid to change the direction. And this is why this, this idea of being an editor is hard, right? An editor for our life, it's hard to do this because a lot of times we've invested, right? And, and when you throw out an investment, it feels, it, feels, it feels sucky, right? But the quicker you can cut off the Band-Aid or you prune the tree or whatever, the better your outcome is going to be. And then the last thing about Anna Wintour that I absolutely like completely respect about her is that she's not openly accessible. Okay, she's not the kind of person you can just walk up to on the street and talk to. She's not the kind of person where, you know, anyone in the organization can just walk into her office. You have to have like an appointment. You have to have a reason to be there. You have to have a reason to be, you know, getting her focus. She's a busy woman. She keeps a strict routine for herself. And it's easy for her to say no because she's super clear on where her attention needs to be, okay? Imagine if in your life you were able to do that for yourself. And you don't have to do it rudely, right? But this is all about setting boundaries, isn't it? It's about knowing what deserves your attention and what does not deserve your attention. I'll give you a little bit of a personal example from when I worked at a Fortune 50 company. I took a new job in a role in the company and it was a job that I like knocked the heck out of the park okay and I was very focused on making sure I was doing the best job that I could because I was serving a very large group of people who needed me to be my best and needed me to basically be on call for them while I was in the office in order for them to produce their best work right there was a person on my team who was officed out of the same office as me. And like I managed a team that was like in a tri-state region, right? So there were some people that I worked with, right? Coworkers that I was responsible for helping that were in my office and then some that weren't. And there was this one guy that was in my office who would come into my office and bullshit with me, okay? For like hours. He would, he, he just like didn't want it. I don't want to say, talk negatively about anyone, but like it was very clear that he did not put a tremendous amount of effort into his job. He had gotten to the point where he's like, oh, I know I know what I'm doing. Like, I can just BS it. And he was a very social person who was kind of like a very alpha male. And a new woman in the office meant that he had to go and like get her to sing his praises, essentially. So he would come in my office and waste my time a lot. And when he would come in, I always turned on this mode of me about me where I was not accessible. Like, oh gosh, I'm so busy. I'm working on this thing for our boss. Our boss asked me for this thing. I can't talk to you right now, right? So I would do whatever I could to get him out of my office after I realized that he was a time waster. Then he started calling me on the phone. 
Okay, even from his office that was like only a short walk from 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 where my office was. And again, it wasn't just for help, right? It would be a waste of my time conversation. And so I would be very tri- tr- like very short with him on the phone. It got to the point where he actually went to my boss and our boss and complained about me. It was like, mm, Alexis is not very nice. I know she's supposed to be our supporting role and she's not being very nice. Like, I don't feel support from her. I don't I don't like her. She's being mean. So I talked to my boss and I was like, um, he is wasting my time. You know how he comes in and he talks to girls and he flirts and does this thing that he does with all the ladies? Yeah, he does that to me all the time. And um, honestly, he should be focused on his work because he's literally interrupting me. And if I get a call from someone else because he's in my office and he's like, it, it's, it's just not a good situation, right? Like, you sometimes have to have hard boundaries with people. So she totally understood it, right? Like, when I explained it to her, she's like, oh, yeah, this, this makes sense. You're not in trouble, okay? But just try, maybe try to be nicer to him because he has a big mouth and he will talk to people and, like, give you a bad reputation. He never ended up giving me a bad reputation. I ended up having the best reputation <laughs> um, in, like, the tri- not even just the tri-state region for this for this um, job that I was in. But like people would call me from like the opposite side of the country um, because they're like, oh, we heard that you were really good at this. Can you help? (laughs) So I was someone who was very good at my job, very respected, but you can't be that person if you are wasting time with people who don't deserve your attention, right? Like I had, there were a set of rules for what I could do for this person and what I was not going to do for this person. I wasn't going to be their therapist and I wasn't going to be I don't know, someone who was just their buddy, right? I was there to do a job for over 30 people who were relying on me, not just his personal assistant, okay? So sometimes you have to be, draw a hard line. Sometimes people don't like it, but you know what? If you don't do it and you don't end up getting your job done at the end of the day, it's your fault, not theirs. You can't point the finger at them. No one's ever gonna accept that. Okay, so I love that about her, right? And I think that's another lesson that we can learn from Anna Wintour about where we put our focus, where we put our energy, because ultimately being the editor-in-chief of your life really means being the editor-in-chief of your time and your energy and your focus. And focus is so important because where your attention goes, energy flows. I love this quote. Again, I'm not sure where, where it's from necessarily, but it does play into the idea of the law of attraction and the principle of vibration. Where attention goes, energy flows, right? So me sitting and talking to this guy in my office taking attention off of everybody else is giving him my energy, right? And like the the idea of energy vampires is real, you guys. There are people who will leech off of your energy for no reason, and then you will be left with less energy to get your job done. So always be vigilant with where your attention is going, because where your focus goes, your energy is flowing, okay? And that's how you know, where's my energy going all day long? Well, I know a lot of people get this, get into this uh, habit of being like, I don't know where all my energy went. I don't know where all my time went today. Well, it's like maybe it was that like thing you were working on or paying attention to that was not really important um, because you were looking at it all day long, like looking at your phone, looking at the news, looking at social media, right? Like watching too many YouTube videos, right? Where did the day go? Where were you looking? Like literally, where were your eyes? Where was your mind, right? You have to have the mental mastery over your mind and over you know, your willpower and where you put focus and attention, because if you put your focus and attention on your goals and objectives, you are going to have a wonderful life that's going to be easy to attain. But if you're someone who's looking all over, like your head's on a swivel, you are never going to make it towards your destination because you're going in too many directions. Okay. So now I want to have a little conversation with you guys about protecting your energy. Okay. Now, this is is an idea that I think is very important, right? And I think if anything is that you get off of this class today, I want you to think about how you can be protecting your energy more often because it is very important, okay? So try the following strategies, okay? Make a not-to-do list, okay? So I love the concept of a not-to-do list. This was one of the prompts in the Productivity Bootcamp. If you guys were one of my bootcamp crew people, you guys may remember this, um, but make a not to do list, right? And this is essentially a list of things you are not going to do. These are activities you're not going to do, things you're not going to pay attention to, people you're not going to give your attention to without like a set of rules. Like, for example, that guy that I worked with, he was definitely on my not to do list. Not to do. You will not talk with X when they come into your office unless they're asking you for something work related that you do for them. And having a conversation about that. But we are not going to gossip. We are not going to talk about what he did this weekend. We are not going to stroke his ego. We are going to do the work 
and put up a boundary, even if it has to mean that you have to be cold, right? Have to seem cold to him and make him feel bad because you know what? He should feel bad wasting my time because I'm good at my job. And when I'm focused on my job, great things happen for my team. So um, that's the way you need to feel, right? Okay, so make a not-to-do do list. What are all the things, all the people, um, all the situations? There are even things that like I've done over and over and over again, right? So for example, I don't want to give anything too specific here, but like let's say like in my business, there are situations where people frequently ask you to do something, right? Um, and I find that I end up getting no return on my investment when I do something like this for someone. So this is something that goes on like my business not to do list. Like we are not doing this anymore, right? We're stopping with this because it really does not end up being worth your time and energy, right? So these are a lot of times you'll have situations that you might find in your own life that you keep doing the same things that like you keep agreeing to run the bake sale at your kid's school and then it ends up being a complete waste of your time way way too much time and energy or way too much investment is made um, in whatever way and you're like we'll never do this again right you need to learn from your past mistakes right that is part of being a very good editor of your life, learning from what didn't work before. You can't just keep being optimistic that this time will be different. If you have good reason to suspect that something is not going to be good for you, then stay away from it, right? Like I would not recommend to a recovering alcoholic to go hang out at a bar, okay? It's not a good practice of your willpower to sit there and not drink, right? Because ultimately you have too much temptation, right? So you just have to avoid it. Okay, so next strategy you might want to try to protect your energy is to define and communicate clear boundaries. You don't have to do this harsh. You won't necessarily get a reputation for being like an ice queen or anything like that. But when there are situations that you see that are developing, there are ways that you can deal with creating boundaries, right? If it's someone who is constantly calling you or constantly trying to talk to you, you can try like not picking up their phone calls, right? Like they'll start to get the message that you're not just openly available, but if you keep answering the phone for them every time they call, they're gonna keep getting the message that you are available to talk to them, right? So that might be something that you need to do, like literally set boundaries through your actions and set boundaries through talking to people, right? Like at the end of the day, like if you're finding that like you have a spouse or a friend or a family member who is imposing on you in a very specific way that's upsetting you or is causing you issues, I bet you if you sit down with them and go, hey, I've noticed that you do this, Like, maybe don't start with it. Maybe like, hi, start with, I love you. You're my best friend. Or I love you. You're my spouse. Or hi, mom. Like, I love you. You're my mom, right? Something positive, right? Compliment them first. Make them feel happy and just say, hey, remember the other day when this happened? I need to tell you about something because I know that you would want to know if you did anything, if something um, that you did inadvertently, you know, caused me stress. And this was the situation. Do you remember that? And this is what happened. And I just want to say, I, I would really appreciate if we can like not do this anymore, right? Like literally, there are certain people like I can't have certain conversations with in my family because it will cause me to blow a gasket in my mind, okay? So it's like sometimes you just have to agree that you're going to disagree or you have to agree that you're not going to be doing certain things. And honestly, nine times out of 10, like, well, actually a hundred times out of a hundred, if a person really loves and cares for you, they will stop. They will probably feel very remorseful and they are going to be happy that you were honest with them. The only times that these things go poorly is when someone is legit a jerk, right? So like the guy that I was trying to set boundaries with and I thought I was like actually doing it as nonchalantly as possible, right? Like just kind of like, oh, I'm busy. Oh, can't right now, right? Like, mm, no, like, hey, can you, I have this work to do and it would, it would just be easier for me if you're not sitting in my office staring at me. Um, so... That is a situation, you know, where someone just doesn't care about you. They're there. They're in it for themselves. And then that's just a person you should probably find a way to cut out. Obviously, if you're at work, can't fully cut them out. But you may need to talk to your boss about it. Like you might need to talk to somebody else to make sure that that situation is known and observed by someone outside of yourself. So if that means going to HR, if that means going to your boss, whatever it is, if you need to write down situations, like I've done that before where I had to like write down. In fact, I think that was maybe something that my boss had me do was like, I want you to write down the next couple of times that he does something and like what the conversations are that he's trying to have with you. And basically I like kept this list and showed it to her and it was like, yeah, he's really wasting your time with BS that he really shouldn't be talking to you about. And I'm like, correct. And so that kind of gives you like backup to set these boundaries and at least have somebody else has your back, right? Now in your personal life, you don't need any reasons to do things really, right? But I would say for work, that's something you wanna keep in mind, okay? Communicate clear boundaries and define them. You need to know what the boundaries are. You need to know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. 
Um, make dedicated time for your self-care regularly, okay? And again, I talk about self-care a lot because it's very important. And I think the thing that I think maybe some people get frustrated about is this concept of self-care really goes into the conversation of having balance. But balance doesn't come from spending equal amounts of time on each area of your life. I think that's something that maybe is I've not communicated well enough, is that when it comes to self-care, it does not necessarily mean that every day you need to do your hair and makeup and primp and pamper yourself and take a bubble bath and paint your nails, right? Like that's not what necessarily needs to be done on a daily basis, right? Self-care is just about correcting the imbalance that you've let one area of your life take a significant precedence precedence over the rest, right? You're never going to get to a point, and it's not really useful, right, to get to a point where you do things for an equal amount of time, right? And if there are any of you out there who are parents, right, like you probably have been in situations or you know this for yourself, that balancing your time with your children, if you have more than one of them, you know, isn't necessarily about spending the exact same amount of time and giving them all each the thing, the same things. Instead, it's about defining what quality time with that child is going to be, right? So like what your child themselves wants individually, right? Like because maybe one kid doesn't want what the other one wants. Like maybe for one kid, filling their cup and giving them quality time might be like reading them a story at night. Like for another kid, it might be like going to watch their soccer game. Like there are things that are really the triggers that really help to create that balance. It's not necessarily equal. Balance doesn't mean equal in the game of your life, right? Because roughly we're all spending like a third of our day sleeping, a third of our day working, and then a third of our day like doing other things, right? So, you know, we're never going to get to a point where like we're self-caring as much as we're sleeping. Although self-care and sleeping is kind of the same thing. But uh, that, you know, we're never going to get to a point where all areas of our life are going to be equal. That's totally ridiculous. So it's all about defining what the need is and how we correct the imbalance that has been given to one area without thinking about others, right? So obviously if you're working all the time and not sleeping, that's an imbalance that needs to be corrected, right? Doesn't mean working the same amount of hours that you sleep, just means going and putting time into sleeping, right? That is necessary, whatever the amount of time is that you're lacking, right? So Regular self-care, whatever that is for you, right? Could it be like like a bath every day? Sure. But could it be like something that you do once a week? Absolutely. It's just about making sure that you are taken care of and that you are doing things that um, put back into your cup, put energy back into your body. And if that's just, you know, every day having a really good routine of nailing the basics, then maybe you won't find that you need to get a bubble bath every once in a while, right? I think that you probably will still want one, right? Because it's a nice little treat. But like, maybe that's all you need in order to take care of your energy. Okay, so that is how you're going to protect your energy as editor in chief of your life. Okay, so now let's get into the productivity edit. Okay, everyone, do you guys have water or drinks or whatever? Mm. I feel like I've been talking forever. I probably have. Oh, well, yeah, I've been like talking for an hour. Okay, we're only like halfway done, you guys. (laughs) I told you this was like a very intense class today, but I feel like there are a lot of messages and takeaways that are very necessary. So please, as you're going through and listening to this, I want you to leave either in the comments if you're live or in the comments of the video if you're watching in the future, what your takeaways are, because I really like to see what you guys are learning about, and that really helps me to create future content to be able to see, okay, you know, a lot of people really liked this part about protecting your energy. Maybe I should make some dedicated videos about it with some extra tips as well. Okay, so um, I just go off of of what you guys say. If you you guys tell me what you like, I like to, I like to be helpful. Okay, so now we're getting into the productivity edit. So this is the part where if you did go ahead and grab yourself that productivity edit workbook that is linked down below, um, it is, just so I could say, like a seasonal planning guide for curating and editing your life. Okay, so um, Again, I'm not sure. I think we're just going to go through this and then I'm going to go in and out of the slides because that's probably easier. So I'm just going to pull out my worksheets. But if you don't have worksheets, grab a notebook, paper, pens, markers, etc. because now we're getting into the workshop of this, okay? So in terms of the productivity edit, 
There are five key elements that build the structure to every great magazine, including yours, metaphorically speaking. Like I said, we are the editor-in-chief of our life. We are going to create a metaphorical magazine to be our productivity plan for the season, okay? So the five areas of a magazine that we are going to address today are the cover, the masthead, letter from the editor, the feature well, and the back of the book. These are real terms that are used, okay, for parts of a magazine that we are going to use their inspiration to then create our productivity edit for the season. Okay, so we're going to take each of these elements as the basic structure to curate and edit our plans for the season, as I just said. So in terms of the cover, the cover is going to be our big picture vision for the season. The masthead is going to be a list of the priority people who will play a role in your achievements. Like I said, part of this idea of being a good editor is being able to get other people on board with what you're trying to achieve. The letter from the editor is where we're going to get clear on our intentions for what we're trying to manifest. The feature well are your focused objectives for the month or for the season, okay? And the back of the book are the more routine tasks essential to your everyday life. And we're going to go into these one by one and we're going to work through some activities, and I'm going to work through with you. First, we'll start with the cover. I think we are all familiar with the idea of a cover of a magazine. Usually, it's got like a big, beautiful image on it, headlines. You know, sometimes there's like a model or a um, a scene. If it's not a fashion magazine, a lot of times it's like, you know, like I'm thinking of like architectural or um, other sorts of magazines, right? Not just fashion magazines here, okay? We're just using this as an example. But the cover is really supposed to be setting the tone for the overall vision for that magazine for whatever season or whatever month the magazine is for. Um, so it's really setting the tone, the big picture vision for what you could expect. And it's giving you some headlines and call outs to draw your attention in so you know what to expect. You know what's important when you pick up that magazine. You kind of know what you're going to get. Okay, so what is on the cover for you this season, okay? So I want you to think about the big picture vision for the outcome of the upcoming season. So we're stepping into fall here. So for this next fall season, what is the big picture vision for your life and the outcomes you're trying to achieve this fall? What is the overall image of your life that you'd like to develop over the next few months, okay? So think about like what you wanna bring into your life, what you'd like it to look like, what you want it to feel like, what are the headlines about your progress that you'd like to read, right? So think about the headlines on the cover of a magazine that like kind of preview the articles inside of the magazine. You know, what are the headlines that you want to see happen in your own life? You want to make these headlines happen in your own life. So I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to escape out of this and I'm going to go back to my desk shot here where I think you guys should be able to see me. I have a lot of things open right now. The need to not be open. Okay. Oh, there, there, there we are. I didn't even know where I was. Okay. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So here, we'll start with the fall worksheets. Okay. The um, cover, cover for fall worksheets. Okay. So let's put this to the side as well. So I've got these nice handy-dandy worksheets out of the Productivity Edit workbook. And this is where we are going to create our cover. So if you've got a notebook and if you didn't get the workbook, no problem, use the notebook. You can follow along and do certain activities along with me. Okay, so the first thing that we want to focus on is the big picture vision for the season, right? So like, what is it that you see for yourself for the upcoming season, okay? We're doing activities here. So I'm going to work. You're going to work. We're going to do this stuff together. I'm going to take this thing off because it's getting a little hot. Okay. So I would love it if you guys could share in the comments so people can get ideas as they're watching. And I will, of course, share some of my ideas with you as well. So for me, my big picture vision for this season, I have decided, is writing. Okay. I want to get back to writing and blogging as a regular part of my routine. So like, my vision is all about writing, writing, writing. Hmm. 
and I'm sorry, I don't have very beautiful like planner girl handwriting, <laughs> right? So what I see for myself this season is writing, right? Like maybe writing with some coffee, going to coffee shops, right? So we're just kind of listing out what this vision is for ourselves, right? Like what do we see? What is this vision for what we want to achieve for our life and how we want to live our life in this season, right? So I'm seeing like writing, coffee shops, like going to Starbucks, um, maybe, yeah, for me, like getting out of my office more. I'm writing down cozy sweaters. I don't know why, because it's going to be fall, and I just feel like being a fall writer, how romantic. <laughs> Um, I've already read The Artist's Way, someone said. Um, I've talked about it before on the channel. Okay, so keywords to describe how you want to feel this season. Okay, I really would love this fall season to be a little bit more of a slow pace for me. And the reason is because I tend to go full speed in the fall, right? So I'm like, no, 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 this doesn't work out because you do full speed at the fall and you burn out. And then after New Year's, you end up having to take like two months off. So I don't want to do that. I want to ease into the new year this year or coming around. So I want a more of a slow pace. I want to focus more on self-care, right? So these are going to be keywords for me. So slow pace, self-care. Um, routine of writing. So I want to do a lot more writing. I want to feel more inspired as well, right? I want to feel more creative, right? That's part of the reason for doing this too, right? Like feeling like I'm the most creative when I'm writing and taking pictures. Oh, I should have wrote photography here too, right? Because part of this vision for my life, <laughs> blogging, right, is to do more writing and photography, but mostly writing is important. Okay, slow pace, self-care, routine of writing, inspired, creative, intentional. Like I just wanna wake up every day and like start my day so intentionally and just only do things super intentionally all day long. Like I don't wanna get off track. Hmm. I wonder if there's any more words. Okay. So I'm going to skip that for right now and keep going. So what are the key headlines that you want to see manifest this season? So what do I want to manifest for myself this season? Let's say that I write and launch a book. You guys know, if you've been following me, this has been something I've been wanting to do, but I haven't been able to prioritize writing so much, so I haven't done it yet. But yeah, let's say that writing and launching a book, right? That's something, like that's a headline. Alexis, Miss Trenchcoat, new book. Let's just get really flipping creative. Blogger of the Year Award. I don't even know if there is one of those. I have been featured in like some like a collection of bloggers that were like, I don't know, like won an award. I don't know what it was. It wasn't really like a real award. Um, but yeah, getting back into blogging, I want to start being seen again as a blogger. Blogging in my niche. Let's see. And again, I would love it if you guys would share yours as well because so it's just a one-sided conversation if I'm sitting here giving you all of my goals. <laughs> um, and there's some more headlines. <laughs> and I'm like, for some reason, I'm like using my name in here. Here, I'm gonna say Alexis hits goal weight. That's a fun one. How to get New Year's ready on a budget. I feel like that sounds like something you'd read on a magazine. Um, oh, yeah. Hot 
Halloween in Salem. That's right. I'm going to do something for Halloween in Salem, Massachusetts, because my best friend lives right there. Here we go. Yeah, so Lane has just said, Lane on fire, YouTube sensation. So clearly, Lane would like to become a YouTube sensation. So that's exactly what we're looking for here, you guys. Like headlines for what you want to accomplish for your life, what you're going to manifest. Because these are the big picture visions for where you're basically going to be spending your time, energy focus, and where attention goes, where focus flows, energy, where focus goes, energy flows. <laughs> it's like a tongue, tongue twister. Um, I'm not sure if I have another one right now, but we'll, we'll, I can come back to this. I don't want to make this like class like seven hours long. Oh. Okay, so someone said, one of my book series has been picked up for a film TV and I'd like to see that move forward. Excellent. So then Tanya, maybe yours will be like, you know, title of book, um, or just a title of show or whatever, a movie, um, is green lighted for season or like six up ep 10 episode season like something like that get really creative about it like I should probably even go through and like get these like a little bit nicer because the more exciting like literally the point of this is to create a headline that is so exciting that you're like oh my god I would die if that were me I would die like what would I be really excited to do this like this season Alexis actually re oh no we should oh I didn't do this right my bestseller ah Alexis uh, we'll say New York Times bestseller. That's how I should have done it. See, even I'm teaching myself things. Bestseller. That's that's the sort of headline we want, right? We want something where not just writing and launching my book, bestseller, right? Something that would be like the ultimate exciting headline, right, for us to reach. Um, and like I said, Blogger of the Year award goes to Miss Trenchcoat, right? That's something that, oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. By the way, just so you guys know if I keep accidentally looking up there, I set up another camera up there. <clears throat> but then I realized that this quality for some reason was looking great that I didn't need that secondary one so I keep looking at it because it's like a bigger camera but really the camera's there um okay so Alexis hits goal weight let's change this to Alexis stuns in evening gown <laughs> this is so I'm going a little crazy here for New Year's See how this is like fun? This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be really pushing outside the bo the box. This is supposed to be like things that are getting you excited. <clears throat> and Yvette says bestseller like that for me too. Exactly. So the point is, is that when it comes in terms of like manifesting, right? In terms of like a passive manifestation of raising your vibration, right? If you guys have heard me talk about this before, very law of attraction sort of stuff, right? What are these headlines? Like, what are the reason we're getting up in the morning? Like, what is the ultimate, like, goal, right? <clears throat> so let's, like, make really exciting headlines for ourselves for the cover of our fall magazine. Okay, I, I still can't think of another one right now, but it's okay. Um, okay, so next, the next part of this is to do a mind map or to create a vision board for the season. Now, it's probably going to be a little bit much for me to make a vision board with you guys right now. And I actually do already have one that I'm kind of like working off of. So I'm just going to do this as a mind map. So if you're someone who is creatively focused, right, like doing a vision board is a great way to see these headlines come to life, right? Visualize them. But I think also creating a mind map is a great way to kind of brain dump these ideas and what it's going to take for you to kind of make them happen, right? So... Let's see. Someone asked a question um, that is this for Q4 or for 2020? Okay, so what we're doing today, today's planning is for the season. So we're about, as we're filming this, again, time is a construct. Tomorrow is September 1st. So I'm looking at this as the fall season for myself. Now, if you consider that to be a quarter of the year, that's fine. September is technically part of Q3, not Q4. Um, but I'm looking at this in terms of seasons of my life and like what's coming up for me. So this is a pre-planning that we're going to do where we're literally visual, like vision casting right now, dream casting, and then taking these dreams and we're going to turn them into more concrete plans that can go into our planner. 
podcast, but this is like a practice that I would recommend people do on a seasonal basis, like either quarterly or seasonal. And that's why I put together the productivity edit workbook, which is basically going to walk you guys through. This is like a 46 page workbook with all these worksheets and stuff in it and directions for what we're doing. So I highly recommend getting the productivity edit workbook. Um, if you are interested in following this sort of vision casting, pre-planning um, and following along and getting the worksheets and all that stuff is all in the book. Like I said, this is a seasonal planning guide for curating and editing your life. So we're this is for someone who's a little bit more creative, right? You're not just like want to get a project plan and put it out. We really want to get creative. We really want to start seeing the headlines, visualizing these because they do help us to reach our goals quicker. It helps us to get into a positive mind state and to just basically vibrate higher so we are aligning with our goals. So she's changing lanes Said finish my study and start my book and find work. Okay, so finish my study. I'm going to assume you're in school. So it's going to be something like she's changing lanes, graduates, summa cum laude, right? So maybe something like that, right? And maybe at this point, you can't do very much <laughs> if you're about to graduate to change that necessarily. But create a fun headline for that, okay? Um, Again, you can use like that example of like the bestseller that we use for the writing your book and um, finding work. Um, you know, she's changing lanes, um, lands six figure contract deal with X company, like whatever it is that you are looking to do, like create that headline as though it's like a headline on a magazine or in a newspaper, write it out. Not like this is where I'm talking about, like this is for like people who are a little bit more and not just just as though there's different types of people, but you need to be a little more creative with this. Like I think people who are creative are going to be all over this and like need to see the visuals and like want to see it. So we're getting a little bit more than just the bland goals that we normally, that I normally teach you, okay? Just let's write out what the goal is and the objective, right? We're, we're vision casting right now. We are outlining these amazing kind of scary things that are like, why would I say that out loud? <clears throat> For example, Alexis stuns an evening gown at New Year's Gala. Like, come on, like, I'm a little bit ridiculous, okay? But like, this is what we're trying to do. Like, what's the big picture vision? Okay, so if you're not someone who wants to like cut out things and make a vision board, that's fine. You can absolutely do this as a mind map. I think that's another great way to do this, okay? Um, let's see, how am I gonna do this? So I wanna do a mind map. Okay, so inside, I'm gonna start like this. I'm gonna say like inspired and intentional fall. Okay, so Okay, so here, for example, so I'm starting with like what the theme kind of is for the season for me. So inspired and intentional fall. That's like what I want. I want to feel inspired. I want to feel very intentional about what I'm doing. And then I'm pulling in one of my headlines here. So Alexis becomes New York Times bestseller. What are the things I'm going to need to do, okay, in order to have that happen? I'm going to establish a daily writing practice. I absolutely need to schedule time blocks for writing a book. And how many of you guys are also writing books? Because you know what? I did have this idea to like maybe put together like a small group of people who are like writing and maybe wanted to like self-publish. Like I'm probably going to self-publish the book. Yeah, I should probably just self-publish. I don't feel like getting, I, I, I know how we, I could go about getting it real published, but I don't necessarily want to do that right now. Um, so if there are a lot of you who are interested in that, and maybe I should talk about this, like maybe send an email to my list or, um, talk about on Instagram. But if you guys would be interested in doing like a mastermind for writing a book and like self-publishing, I would be open to hosting that. 
Um, so let me know about that. It would definitely be something where there would be like, it would probably be something that you'd pay for because it would be a lot of work. But we could do something like regularly scheduled writing sessions together. We could like share manuscripts for, with each other, ideas, processes, graphic design stuff, things like that. You know what I mean? And just like it'd be like a mastermind that we're all focused against the same thing. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. Reach out to me. Send me an email as well. Like send me a uh, something. Send me a message somewhere where I can get in touch with you. Email would be best. Um, but you can also leave comments here and I'll try to respond. But the comments are going to go away, I think, on the, I don't know, this live. So send me a message privately too. Um, okay, so I need to establish daily writing practice. I need to schedule time for a book, for, for actually writing the book. I need to develop a launch plan. And here's what I'm going to do that's going to be like going into an, an, the next premise we're going to talk about here is... I want to align with um oh, what is that word I can't think of words right now like early readers or whatever affiliates this is it basically friends of mine that could help or promote it okay okay so <clears throat> That's for like one of these headlines. So what I'm going to do then, if I was going to mind map the rest of this, right, is basically take all of those headlines and kind of create this sort of like branch thing where it's like inspired and intentional fall. This is one of my headlines. These are the things that I'm going to actually have to do to make that happen. And honestly, launch plan is probably connected to aligning with my affiliates, right? Because that's they're going to be part of a launch. So just think about how all the things like interact, right? So I'm going to move on so this is not the longest video known to man. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to go back into the slides. Okay, so the masthead. Now, the masthead of a magazine is the place where it's like a page where all of the people who contributed to the magazine are listed out and like what their roles were, okay? So in terms of creating your own personal masthead, who do you need to get on board with your vision in order to achieve maximum success? So who are your priority people in your life? Who are you responsible to and responsible for, right, that might be affected by you spending time in this goal and might be able to help you achieve the goal? And what can you do to get these key players on board and effectively manage them for a successful season, okay? So, exiting out of this, coming back to me. Okay. So that is the concept for the masthead. So I've got some worksheets for the masthead. Take these and put these somewhere here. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. The priority people in your life, roles, responsibilities. Again, no man, no woman does anything alone. Truly, we have other people out there that can be resources for us or at least can help us in some other way. Who are these people? What are you going to do to communicate with them and give them defined responsibilities that might need to change? You know, what they normally do with you, but you know, everyone has to participate and help, you know, that's being affected, right? Um, <clears throat> so who are the priority people in your life and their roles and responsibilities? Uh, number one here, I have editor-in-chief. So I'm putting my name in here. Alexis. Miss Trenchcoat. Follow me on, on Instagram. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel and like this video and share it. <clears throat> make sure you guys are drinking enough water. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Okay, so after the person, you've got the role written in already for the first one, responsibilities to focus on this season. Things that I need to focus on this season is, number one, creating that daily writing practice. Right? This is something I have to be intentional to. I need to do a slow and intentional routine. 
I also want to say something like more proactive planning. Like I really need to be just more proactive, right? So I think one of the things that will stop there being a lot of interruptions in my day or a lot of like fires that I end up having to put out is if I'm just more proactive about making sure I do things earlier than expected. And of course, I've also put like frequency. So the daily writing practice is daily. Like I just want to be writing every day. The routine as well as daily. More proactive things. Maybe on a weekly basis, I should think about things and focus on things that I should be doing proactively. Okay, next, of course, because there's you, you're managing yourself here, but you're also going to manage other people in your life. So I'm going to do some examples here. So we're going to say spouse, right? So let's say you've got a spouse, right? The role is going to be um, household support. So let's say if you're like me and you're working towards some goals, right? And you, you've got like this goal that you're going to write a book this season, right? What that means that you're not going to have enough time necessarily for maybe some other things in your life. This absolutely happens and that's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So what responsibilities are you going to give to your spouse and communicate with them that you need them to do? So like maybe it would be something like, um, maybe like if your kids go to school during the day, maybe it's like evening childcare. Maybe you're usually the one who like entertains the kids, but guess what, honey, I need you to do it. It's going to be daily. Um, Maybe you need them to walk the dogs (laughs) or something if you have pets or something. Um, And maybe it's something you need them to do like three days a week. I don't know. I'm making things up here. Um, And let's say you need them to like share dinner responsibilities. So let's say like you're also tell them like three days a week. These are the days like maybe you'll say like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right. Those will be the days that they need to prepare dinner so that you don't have to because let's say you're doing your book instead of writing, instead of creating dinner, right? So this is how you can get other people in on your goals. Now, obviously, you are going to have to talk to your spouse, right? And get them on board, right? But like I said, 100 times out of 100 times, if you are talking to someone who cares about you, they are going to be okay with helping you, right? So get them on board, get the responsibilities very clear. We're defining clear responsibilities for them. And the frequency. And if you want to take it one step further, it would be a great idea to like help them by, let's say, setting up like alarms for them on their phone or something like that to like remind them of the things they need to do. Um, So something like that, right? So you can do this for every person in your life that you might need to change some responsibilities for. Let's say you have a kid. Let's say you have a child who is like high school age, okay? Roll. You're going to you're going to talk to them and maybe they need to maybe you're going to give them some responsibilities. Maybe they need to start um I will say household responsibilities again. I hate doing the same thing. Um or not child goals, we'll say child care. Let's say you have more than one kid and you've got child age 14 and you've got another one that's seven right so maybe what you're going to ask the 14 year old for this season is hey i would like it if you could um like play with your brother play with sibling right two days a week right so maybe like the days that the that the dad or let's say um is doing the child care not those days right So maybe like the dad will just do it three days a week and then the the adult, the not adult, so the older older sibling will do it the rest of the days, right? So like get other people involved. Like maybe this other child can start doing laundry. You know what I'm saying? Like um, I would be hopeful that if you had children that were like a little bit older, that they would have responsibilities around the house, but you never know. Like some people like the mom is really like hands-on with everything. And then what ends up happening is you don't have time for yourself, right? Like literally we do this to ourselves sometimes and we don't utilize other people. Um, here, we could even do something like this. Like let's say you have a, a have a neighbor, right? Neighbor, roll, dog walker. Maybe you have a, maybe you could even neighbor that you're kind of friends with. Like I actually have like a bunch of like adult kid neighbors that are near me. I've often wondered if I could, I've, I've thought about it before, like paying them to walk the dogs for me. Um, 
if it was like a day I didn't want to do it or whatever, like maybe get them on like a schedule to do it for me because I have these kids available. You know what I'm saying? And like adult, ki- adult kids can be like adult, you know, like teenager kids, like high school age kids can normally be trusted with simple things like walking a dog for someone and are usually happy to like make a few extra bucks, right? So like who can you bring in to your circle? Do you have a friend, right, who... um is um let's say you have a friend who like loves to cook okay and this person is going to like you've asked them to meal prep for you like one meal a week like I know that saying some of this stuff out loud sounds crazy but like this is stuff that like I do with my friends like I have gone through periods of time where like I've had my friends over like on a reg- on the regular basis for dinner, which would mean that they don't have to, you know, if it's a regular thing, they don't have to do it. You know what I mean? Like, what are you willing to do for others that you would ask others, you know, see if other people could get involved with? Now, obviously, don't ask your, like, really busy friend who's, like, always stressed out to do anything for you. But if you have a friend that, like, you know could be the one that does X, Y, or Z for you, like, I've gone grocery shopping for a friend before. Like, I'm like, I'm out, I'm going to pick up some stuff, and then they just, like, Venmo me the money, right? Like, for whatever they ordered. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not an unusual thing to help people out. So maybe a friend could be, like, driving your kid to school, picking your kids up from school, like, something like that, transportation. Um, no man is no man is an island here. No woman is an island here. Think creatively about some things that take time out of your schedule that you might be able to enlist help for, right? You might be able to enlist help for. Okay, just think about solutions, be creative about it. Those are some examples that I think are hopefully a little bit helpful to you. Obviously, if you guys have like more specific examples, like, hey, Alexis, I have this problem, what can I do? I can maybe give you some examples, but um, okay, okay. Just looking and checking on my comments. Okay, so that is the masthead. So who are the people that you are going to get involved with your with your goals? and people you can trust and see if they can assist you in some way, shape, or form, okay? Next, we're going into the letter from the editor, and we're going to go to slide. Oh, wait, what have I done here? You guys there? Yay, slides, okay. Um, what have I done? Here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> letter from the editor. Okay, so the letter from the editor is something that you see in a lot of magazines as well. And it is a place where the editor of the magazine writes a letter to the future readers of the magazine and basically sets the tone, their intention, their vision for what they were trying to accomplish with the magazine, things they were focused on, um, and maybe calls out some things that they can expect, some articles that they would recommend, and kind of ties the theme together by giving like a personalized letter. So what we're going to do creating our own letter from the editor is to think about what intentions are you setting for yourself this month, okay? This is what we're we're going to do, write ourselves a letter. So um, write a letter to your future self outlining how to how you plan to feel, what you know, what you know. Notice how I said that, what you know you'll accomplish and manifest, and where you intend to be by the month's end or we'll say the season's end, right? So if you want to do this on monthly, you could do it for a month. If you want to do it for a season, do it for a season. So this is your opportunity to lay out in detail what you want and what you're going to do to ensure you get it. Intentions aren't just expectations for receiving, but also expectations for how you will set up and take responsibility for outcomes as well. Okay, so this is where we're going to be doing some future writing for your intentions for this season. So what are we doing here? Okay. Oh, that's what I should have done this whole time. I just realized I could do something on my, okay. So we're going to write ourselves a letter from the future. Okay. Future writing is a activity that I highly recommend. It is great for passive manifestation as opposed, well, it's great for active manifestation as well. But passive manifestation is the idea that when you align clearly with what you are intending, what you want, what you see, and it clearly expecting it to happen, the results, those outcomes will come to you quicker. They will be brought to you instead of you having to take action. So again, a little bit of law of attraction here, but the science for this, it really is science-based, unfortunately, for those of you who just thought all this woo-woo stuff was crap. Um, There is a part of your brain in your brainstem called the reticular activating system. And what it does when you 
set your intentions like this or create a vision board like you may have already done or done a mind map, things like that. When you start seeing the intentions that you have, what ends up happening is it sh- where attention goes, energy flows, right? So your attention is on that vision and a ripple effect kind of goes out into the energetic universe because we don't really see this, we don't feel this, but we're like fish in a bowl, you guys. There's energy all around us and we are sending out our energy all the time. <clears throat> and the reticular activating system actually ends up programming you um, to kind of send out a signal that will bring back or help you to recognize the opportunities that will give you uh, what you're looking for, right? So, and make it bring it to you. Now, when it comes to this sort of passive manifestation, I'm not someone who necessarily believes you could just sit around and not do anything <laughs> um, and just expect things to come to you. But I do think that when you use passive ma- manifestation techniques along with active manifestation, so like actually planning and executing on what you want, that they work like synergistically to help you get to the end point of what you're looking to achieve quicker. Now, something that I specifically like to use passive manifestation for is problem solving people and resources and solutions. Um, So if you are someone who, let's say, um, let's say, let's take the writing the book example, that you're someone who wants to write a book, you don't, let's say you don't want to do self-publishing. You're like, I would like to try to get traditionally published, but I'm not sure how. Okay. So we write this letter where we're going to talk about how wonderful it's going to be when we get, you know, we get our agent and we get our um, book deal and we become a New York Times bestseller, right? So by setting those intentions, right, we can actually specifically say to like our reticular activating system that we're looking for the best agent, right? Right? So like there's, I'm sure you could do research and find agents on your own, but how do you make a choice? Remember we talked about this before that like sometimes you know, we're afraid of making the wrong choice. Well, you don't have to choose. Let the universe choose for you, right? Like let that passive manifestation bring to you some options that you can now choose from, right? Because sometimes we have no clue where to start, even when we have solutions in front of us, right? So let us ask for signs. Let us have someone be brought to us through this integration synergistic alignment of Passive manifestation with active manifestation, which would be actually going out and doing things. So as you're writing your book, right, as you're doing there, sitting there and doing your work and you're thinking, ah, the universe uh, is going to be sending me an agent. So I don't need to worry about it right now. What I need to worry about right now is writing the book, right? Don't need to worry about agent at this point until the book is actually done, right? (laughs) So you may find that through your writing sessions, right, maybe, you know, you know some people, you're also maybe you've joined a group for writing or something like that. And just in the course of your day, a course of your life, you're doing your your writing and you start to see information, right? And maybe you'll see an ad for like an agent somewhere, or maybe you'll see someone pop up in your Twitter that's like, um, I'm, an, I'm a literary agent looking for new, to take on new clients, right? You might see something somewhere that's going to put you down the rabbit hole to find the right person, right? Or to find a few people that you then can meet with and you decide who you like the best, who gives you the best feeling, right? So that is how I like to use passive manifestation, right? Never to expect that like, I'm going to sit here wishing for a million dollars and it's going to land on my desk. No, but by setting the intention for what I'm looking for that I might not be sure of yet, right? Like something like who's going to be my agent? Um, that's something you could totally say, hey, universe, I'll do the work and write the book. I need you to send me a great agent who's going to be able to negotiate me the best possible offer. I've done my part excuse me, you've done your part and together I become a New York Times bestseller. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, so letter from the editor that we're going to write is going to incorporate that vision, right? All of those headlines and things like that. But what we're going to do is do a future writing, right? Where we are stepping into the end of the season, the end of the month, whatever it is. I like to do season because, you know, honestly, I think that when you're focusing on objectives, I think 90 days, to get like a goal done, an objective done is a really nice sweet spot of time to accomplish something that's a little big, like writing a book. Like I could easily write, edit, publish a book in 90 days, self-publishing. Now, can I necessarily 
publish, get published right now without an author, without a book, uh, without a, I'm sorry, without an agent, without a book deal right now in the next 90 days? No. But I could write my book and find an agent and possibly get a book deal in the next 90 days. That's possible. That's possible. And then who knows, like the editing company or whatever it's called, the publisher, I guess, right, would be the one who would determine when it gets published, I guess, or like the time frame for that. But, you know, we can do what we can do. And then we have to acknowledge what it is that we still need help with. And we can ask the universe, right? We can set the intention. We can program our reticular activating system to bring us that information, right? It's not magic. It's not woo-woo. Information is around us at all the time, right? But are we programmed to see it? Yes or no? This activity helps you get programmed to see it. Okay, so future writing, we're setting, I'm saying like at the end of this season, like what am I at? Okay, so we'll, you could date it. I love this. Okay, so what's the date going to be? Mm, let's say it's December 1st, right? Because I'm going to take this as three months from like now. So we're going to say December 1st, 2019. Right? It's like a journal entry. Dear Diary, I like Joe. Does Joe like me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dear Diary, um, I am excited to report that... Where am I going to be? Where would you want to be? You have to think about everything. Like, where am I writing this at? Ugh. Okay, I am excited to report that I am, I have no clue if any of this is possible. I'm just writing this out. I'm excited to report that I am sitting in New York Times headquarters in Times Square. And for the first time in their history, I'm just going to be writing this like so crappily. They have decided to list a self-published work <laughs> on their New York Times best-selling books list. Yeah, because if you didn't know, if you don't have a traditional publisher, you probably aren't getting on the New York Times bestseller list because you have to be a hard copy of a book. That's how they, they do it. And when you self-publish, you usually don't get a hard copy of the book. Mm. Um, so I'm really excited that I'm sitting here in New York Times. They're about to interview me. <laughs> For this momentum, momentous achievement. My book sold 1 million copies in one day, in the last week. Thousands, <laughs> don't you love my terrible handwriting? Thousands of readers <clears throat> have reached out to myself and several news, and several news outlets. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys, let me tell you right now, me laughing hysterically. Do you know how high my vibration is right now? If you're not doing this and laughing hysterically at what you're doing, like having so much fun, like at this possibility, it's like in one hand, it seems ridiculous, but it's so much fun to be ridiculous sometimes, right? And this is like best case scenario, clearly. And that's what I want to project the universe. Universe, give me the best case scenario. Because any of you sitting out here going, if you guys have ever heard me talk about impossible versus improbable, I go into this in my um, You Got This workbook, if you guys have that. And I've talked about this a little bit outside of that book as well, that a lot of people would say, like, if, uh, like, Alexis, you are going to self-publish your book. Uh, you're never going to be on the New York Times bestseller list. That's impossible. No, it's not. It's just improbable because someone at New York Times decide what's goes, decides what's going on that list. Yes, they normally do it off of hard copy books. But what if somebody published a book and it was so wildly successful, super quick, and like everybody in the world was like, this is the most amazing book. It's changing my life. Wouldn't the New York Times be like, we might want to report on this. We might want to change our rules, right? We might want to get with the 21st century here. And include other people. Now I say that, I don't know, maybe they have changed their rules recently. I just didn't, I'm not aware of it yet. But 
right? It's improbable. It's not impossible. Impossible, And because it is physically, po- it is a possibility within this world that we live in that New York Times could just let me be on the list. We're going to go for it, okay? You have no clue. Maybe I'll be, it's like I'll, I'm trailblazing here, okay? So, um, okay, so uh, my book sold 1 million copies in one day. In the last week, thousands of readers have reached out to myself and several news outlets to express how amazing their lives have become due to reading my book. It has helped people's productivity and mindset dramatically. Rumors are Megan and Harry are gifting it to all their friends and family. (laughs) For Christmas this year. Uh, (laughs) I am so incredibly thankful that I was able to slow down and get intentional with my writing to focus on this project. I am so grateful for my friends and community who helped spread the word about the book. so quickly Um, after this interview I have a appointment at Hermes (laughs) to buy my first Birkin (laughs) to commemorate. I can't, I cannot spell, nor do I have good handwriting, um, this occasion. Love Alexis, okay? Okay, so you guys just listened to me read the most ridiculous future writing letter that I actually, I actually am going to sit down and redo this because I loved this. I actually loved this one. I think this was a great one. You guys, I think I'm just feeling really high vibe about this right now that maybe we should put together a group of people who do want to self-publish or regular publish. I do know people who have, I do have, I do have resources, right? And I know people who could connect to real agents and real publishing companies if that was something people wanted to do. Um, But if they wanted to do that, try that avenue before self-publishing, absolutely. But maybe we should, like, let's really think about this. Let's get together. If you're really serious, I would be willing to do that because I am really focused on making sure I get my writing under control. So, and then this is just the second page of this for the writing. But yeah, obviously this is just one of the goals, right? That I have listed with one of the headlines. I could integrate the other headlines as well. Optional, right? Now, let's see. We're going back to the slides. Boom. Okay, so next part, click on this. Next part of the magazine is the feature well. Okay, so the feature well is the part of the magazine that have all of the feature articles, right? So the feature articles are usually those headlines, right, that are put on the cover refer to feature articles that are supposed to be like the interesting content that is new for that issue, right? Every issue has content that they kind of always do issue after issue, and then they have new articles that are the feature articles, okay? So, 
For your feature well, what are the three objectives you are focused on for, again, this month or this season, however you want to take this? What three objectives will add to the story of your life, okay? And what is the plan to achieve these objectives? And what will you do to ensure these objectives are prioritized, okay? So that's what we're doing right now. Let me get my feature well worksheet. I love these worksheets. You guys definitely need to get the productivity edit because these are so fun. Like literally I... You guys, I like create these things for myself and then I let I, they make them available for you guys as well. Um, so, okay, feature well. Okay, so objective number one, I think we know what it is going to be, is to write and we'll say publish slash launch book. Okay, that's the first objective, right? We need to launch a book due date let's say november 30th 2019 okay now what are the actions that we are going to have to take in order to make this happen so obviously i need to write the book i need to design a cover i need to do the book's layout i need to find affiliates I need to get my audience involved. You guys. <laughs> um, I would need to create bonuses. Um, I would need to create content. I would need to do photography for the book and probably pictures of me with the book, okay? I would need to release some for sort of public statement. <laughs> probably a blog post or an email right that talks about it oh i would need to create pr packages uh get early readers uh get reviews written of it from early readers obviously okay so that is one objective, one of the three objectives um, that I would be focused on for the next 90 days. And then what we're going to do here, okay? So remember that whole, what are you going to do to ensure these objectives are prioritized? We're going to create a monthly schedule where we're actually going to schedule these things in. So I would need one of these for every month, but I don't need to do it for every month now. So let's see, September... Oh, yeah, and these inserts are all, like, undated, so you guys can use them over and over and over again. Um, they just have, like, fall, spring, summer, winter, like, seasonal on there, but you can define what those seasons are. Okay, September. What is the calendar for September? <laughs> it starts on a Sunday. So I'm just going to go ahead and on the corner here, I'm going to go one, two, Three, four, five. Okay. So um, and in this little calendar thing that I made for myself, it's like undated, like I said, and it has like three boxes or lines so that you have something for each objective if you wanted to schedule more than one thing um, for your objectives. And so what are we going to do here? So what I'll say is like, like I said, I want to do some sort of like routine with my writing. So probably something like I want to do like a block of time, probably during the week. So I'll say like a m block 
to write, okay? And I'm gonna block off this time through here, and then maybe I'll give myself Saturday and Sunday off, right? So then AM writing block. And I should really just put in a scheduled time, right? Not just say AM writing block, but essentially my intention of that right now is my first block of work that I end up doing um, each day needs to be writing related, right? So this is how this is gonna go. And so I would fill this out, you know, basically have this scheduled in here and then the other objectives as well, I would have them scheduled in here, like creating a preliminary schedule for myself so that when I'm done this whole process, I can take this and put it in my planner and actually mark off all of these times, right? So we've done this sort of pre-planning in order to take this information and then put it into our planners so that we actually execute it, okay? So that is the idea for the future, the feature well. And let me go ahead and get back to, oh, no, that's where we are. Okay, slides, hi, okay. Now, the back of the book. I know this sounds like so professional, right? That's like actually the terminology for it. So the back of the book is all of the sort of reoccurring news, fe not features, but news articles, information that magazines may put into every issue, right? So the things like the horoscopes and maybe if they like include recipes or maybe someone um, has a regular uh, feature that they write every um, every month. I, for some reason, I think it's Vanity Fair has Dominic Dunn's diary is in, like, so Dominic Dunn is a writer. Um, he does like crime stuff related stuff and he has a what is that called a column that's right a column or like a regular reoccurring you know article that he always writes for that magazine or at least he did so that is stuff that would go in the back of the book right so the way i interpret this for our usage here is that these are the sorts of tasks and schedules and appointments and things that we need to do just for like routine life right so we all know that our lives don't just stop right and we can put all of our energy on focusing on our goals and objectives when we have a goal and a tour and objective right we still have to manage the rest of our life right so we're going to call this the back of the book like this is the stuff that is in everybody's lives or is always in your life no matter what objectives that you're working towards so we want to make sure that these items are properly planned for as well and this is even more important when we're going after big goals because we really don't have any time to spare. We need to make sure that we've systematized all of these routine things that we're doing um, and found solutions for them so that we are able to optimize, you know, the way we're spending our time so that we can spend more time on what actually matters, which is the goals. So make sure the items are properly planned for. Can any of the items that are on your list be delegated or deleted? And can you streamline any of these items through habits or routines, okay? So what we're gonna do for this activity, thinking about these important questions that I have put up for you guys, is we are going to go back to my desk. There we are. Okay, and use the back of the book. Okay, so in one of these sheets, what I have here is and this is what I want you guys to do on like a note paper if you're not using the worksheets, is to list out all the important dates, events, and appointments that you know you have coming up this season. So however you've decided to do this, if you've decided to do it on a monthly basis or if you've de decided to do it for a, a seasonal basis, what are all the important dates? So do you have birthdays? Are there holidays? Do you have appointments scheduled? Um, do you have conferences to attend? Are there school-related things for your children? Are there things for your spouse? Do you have a vacation planned? Everything that is scheduled right? Needs to be listed out. So you want to know the date, what the event is, and your specific responsibilities, right? So like you're not going to write down something like, I know Columbus Day is coming up, right? I, if you go to a Columbus Day festival, you might want to write down attend Columbus Day festival, right? Because that's something that's going to use your time. But if Columbus Day is for you, what it is for me, which is just a day, right? Um, it's great. It's a holiday, right? I don't need to list it, right? Um, it's nice to know about that it's there, right? But I don't have to do anything about it. Let's say you're listing down here birthdays, right? Don't just write down Susie's birthday is on, um, you know, September 12th, right? Write down that Susie's birthday is on September 12th and you need to buy her a present, right? That's what, I mean, if you are, if, if not, what's the point of writing it down to keep track of it, right? So 
anything that has to do with a scheduled event, right? There is something usually that you need to do with it, right? So if it's a doctor's appointment, you need to go to the doctor. Let's say it's a bake sale for your child's school. You might need to have something prepared for that, right? So anything that is a scheduled event, a holiday, something like that, write down what your responsibilities are for it. So I'm trying to think right now. Anything that I need to do that I could give you guys an example. Hmm. Okay, at some point in December, this is probably like a bad one right now, but some point in December, I, I have to do, um, my car needs to be inspected. So I need to, in order to have my car inspected, right, I need to renew registration first. And I usually do that online, and then I need to schedule drop off for the car right so someone can actually check the car out i always i don't ever i always go in and schedule my stuff for my car right so that might be a due date and i might want to actually probably choose a day possibly and put it in there but for now i just need to i'm just gonna put in december um i don't have a ton of things like this luckily in my in my life okay so november what day is the day of thanksgiving I'm going to put Thanksgiving. Um, I'm certainly cooking <laughs> and cleaning that day, right? That's going to be a whole thing of itself for, for me, but that's like a routine thing. I'm definitely going to be cooking. I definitely need to clean. Let's say that you, like Thanksgiving comes up for you in your fall, right? Um, let's say you're not the host, right? But let's say you're bringing a casserole, right? Have that day listed out what it is that you need to get done, what your responsibilities are for that event, right? So I hope this makes sense. So this is something that might take you a little bit of time and a little bit of research. You have to look some different places to see what's coming up. You may need to pull in schedules for your family members, people that you're responsible for, things like that. Um, something that I know I also have coming up is in October. I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, I am do going to Salem, Massachusetts for Halloween, maybe not Halloween day proper, but I'm doing something Halloween-y with my girlfriend and there might be like a group of us who go up there. So we need to talk about that, right? This is something I need to like talk about with people so we can get things booked, tickets booked to events, things like that, get the plan together, right? So that would be maybe like right now, my responsibility right now is to get the plan together. <laughs> like, actually get the plan together because I'm the planner of the group. So I probably have to instigate that, right? So just be clear on these things that you need to do, okay? Next thing. So those were all the scheduled appointments, things that you know about. Then you want to list out all of your non-project related tasks that you are aware of for the season. So one-off things that you might need to do. For example, um, I need to switch the clothes in my closet, right? Okay, and I will need to clean out my guest bedroom. And um, let's see, <laughs> so hard to like do this on, on, let's just leave those things for now. Um, you have these tasks that you just know need to get done at some point. What you're going to do here as well is give them actual due dates, okay? So you will look at your, your schedule after you have these scheduled items kind of looked out and say, when am I going to schedule the time in to switch the clothes in my closet from like summer, spring to fall, winter, right? I want to schedule that in so that I actually get it done. Um, you know, it's so funny. I write this down and I don't even remember what this says. Oh, it says clean out guest bed. I thought it said even out gingerbread. Um, <laughs> okay, clean out the guest bedroom. So that's something that I would need to do in preparation for the holidays. I have my guest bedroom ready because usually people are staying with me. So when would I need to get this done? Like have my guest bedroom organized? Like when does this need to be done? When can I schedule it for? So essentially, 
The idea with the back of the book is to look at all of these tasks that you just know you need to get done um, and have the list and create the schedule. Be very clear on those responsibilities because right now, this is the last step actually of this entire process. After this, you're going to take all this information that we put together in this process of doing your productivity edit and you're going to put it into your planner and get it scheduled so you actually do it. Because we all know if you do not schedule the things, they do not get done, right? So we want to have a complete list of what all of our responsibilities, tasks, obligations are. And if we can, a great thing to do would be to bulk do things if we can, right? So like try to get a bunch of stuff done together. Maybe you listed out everybody's birthday on here for the next three months. And guess what? You're going to go out one day when you're shopping and buy all of the cards and all of the presents, right? And get all of that done at one time instead of piecemealing it by not, you know, being proactive and sticking to the plan, right? What's the point of knowing when everyone's birthday is if you're not celebrating it? Like you're going to, I guess, send them a card, right? Like send them a card or call them or you send them a present, right? Just know what your responsibility is going to be for that person and what you need to do. And then obviously anything that is dated, which is going to be everything, okay, on your productivity edit, everything is going to be dated in some way, shape or form. You can then take this, like I said, put it in your planner and also create, uh, oh wait, did I, sorry, I'm so bad. Let's go back to the slides. Alexis. Okay, it's back to the slides. Sorry about that. That's the next step. Sorry. <laughs> Once you have your productivity edit completed for the season, transfer the schedule and task information into your planner. So much for making slides. Add reminders to your phone or your computer or any web-based scheduling if you'd like use like Google Calendar or something like that. And um, the great thing about this whole productivity edit process is that it works with any planner or any time or task management system. So definitely get your copy today if you want to get these great worksheets. Um, you know, this class was obviously live on YouTube for free. I want you guys to come back to this as much as you want to, but you can continue to support me and my goals and my, you know, business by purchasing something like the productivity edit. I love this because I think it's a great way to really set intentions and look at your year um, or your seasons of your year piece by piece and kind of like start over every season, make that, you know, follow this sort of process because that's really what it is, right? So something else I wanted to let you guys know about if you're not following me on Instagram, you may not have seen this, which is that the 2020 planners, the Charm Life Master Planners are now available. So the 2020 Master Planner bundles are actually on sale. Um, and I have actually put together a bundle that has all of the sizes of the Master Planner together for the price that I normally sell one at. So you can get your personal a5 and your letter planners in the PDF print on demand form in the bundle for the price of one. Thing is, today is the last day for this, okay? So um, today is the last day for that sale. It is going to be still like discounted. I'm not just going to like charge you guys full price for like all three planners, but the special sale price, like the lowest price is ending today. So if you're interested in my planner system, right? The Charmed Life Master Planner, get your print on demand bundle today because it's the best price you're going to possibly get it at. Remember that the Charm Life Master Planner is not just a calendar, but it's a complete functional planning system with 12 functional planning spreads. So most planners, as you know, are what I consider a calendar. It's just for scheduling. It's like a monthly with a weekly and maybe a task list. But the Charmed Life Master Planner is different. It is a complete functional planning system system and it has 12 different functional planning spreads okay so let me talk to you about the spreads that are going to now be in the master planners because all of them are the same now i've basically made all of the guts of all of the planners digital and bound the same so with the dated uh, planners you get a yearly calendar okay looks like this okay you get a yearly tracker okay so the yearly tracker i used to give that away as a freebie i'm not doing that anymore the yearly tracker is now in the planners. Yearly overview, same thing that used to be like a separate one-off freebie. Now it's in the planner. It's all built in together for one complete system. And this is a four page spread. You only see two pages here, but there's the yearly overview. So you can have every month of your year, the dates, and you can plan like an overview of your year. Then you get the monthly calendars, right? So the month on two pages, Oh, with that whole this week section that I absolutely love. Like, I, I know a lot of people ask me about this. It is not supposed to be this month. That column there that's traditionally like a notes column or sometimes they, people like actually just like the designers take that 
column out altogether. But that is where you will set your top three priorities for that week. And that's really great for doing really, you know, really managing your plans moving forward. So I highly recommend that. Um, then uh, something that has changed this year in the master planner, if you're familiar with previous years, we still have the monthly task list, still the same, but I changed the monthly tracker to be this more unique um like sort of chart form. So I'm going to show you guys um, probably in some future videos how I use that so you guys can get a sense. But essentially, this new tracker is a lot more flexible for those of you who either want to change up what they're doing and tracking every month. So it's not just a habit tracker anymore, but it can be used as a habit tracker. It can also be used as an expense tracker. Honestly, I'm excited to see all of the ways that you guys end up using these trackers because I know you guys are more creative than I am in terms of how you could use them. So I look forward to seeing what you guys end up creating with that monthly tracker because it's a nice, simple sort of like checkbox grid um, that you can do a lot of different things with. It also ends up replacing my, um, if you guys see the task list, I have like the task list that I sell separately in the shop, you're not going to need it now because the task list, you could use this as the task list. Okay, then you've got your weekly plan spread. So all of the planners have a week on two pages. You're looking at the week on two pages for the A5 half letter. Every one of the planners, everything is essentially the same in all of the planners except for the weekly plan section, okay? Because the weekly plan, I've created three unique layouts to really optimize the size of the planner. So this is the layout that you get in the A5 half letter, which is personally the planner size I use, where you get the top three every day, the lined section for um, notes, extra to-dos, or you can create an actual like timetable schedule there, and then like the open boxes, and then the joint weekend with the open box, so you can do whatever you need to do. Um, you know, leave that as the most important tasks, add extra tasks, or decorate whatever you want to do in the open boxes. Okay. And then the weekly plan for the personal size is a very similar layout that's truncated for personal size planners. And because of that, you get like an extra this week column for extra um, to do's. And so the columns for the A5 and the personal are actually the same. So instead of three columns a page, you get two here, but they're the same. And they all fit vertical square planner stickers. So happy planner stickers and Erin Condren stickers, those boxes, they do fit in these. And then the weekly plan for the A4 letter planner is this more unique, what I consider, I consider this like a weekly plan with a dashboard, right? So you're still getting the idea of having like top five projects, like the top five things you need to work on, um, a complete task list, daily top three. But then on the dashboard section, you have the ability to create, again, like your own personal tracker, either a time tracker. I've seen people use this for like additional lists. I've seen people use this for like ideas and inspiration. I've seen people use this as like sort of like a color coding. Um, they're different like how they spent their day. You know what I mean? Like almost like a memory planning, but kind of like a timekeeping, like measuring time, like what projects you were spending on. Um, then you get a market list for shopping and a a weekly meal plan integrated into that size. Then, okay, every planner goes back to the same thing again, which you get a project tracker for the year, okay? So you can tr keep track of your short, mid, and long-term projects. You get a plethora of project plans with notes, 40 spreads of this. You get a brain dump section, 20 brain dumps, which is something I like to do on a monthly basis. I like to do a complete brain dump of everything that I haven't been writing down. And then I organize it using the prioritization matrix, also known as the Eisenhower matrix on that right side. Then you get a bunch of brainstorm sheets. And I say 20, right? That's how many you get in the bound planners. But obviously the print on demand planners, you have that amount like to start off with if you just wanted to print, um, but you also get the refills, right? Which means you can always add more. Like, and I, the refills are easier to print out. They're like unnumbered, the pages are unnumbered and you can easily add pages to your planner that way. Um, so brainstorm, this is where I do a lot of my pre-planning and you guys have seen in like in previous planner videos how I use this for like business planning on a quarterly basis, etc. And then you get note sheets and index pages so that you can keep track of what is on each page of your planner, okay? So 
You can also get this in the Bound Master Planner version. So we've got the 2020 Bound Master Planner, which is available now on Amazon. I've got a link down below in the description for both of them. If you want the Bound one or if you want the bundle, they both have the same great 12 functional planning layouts. And this is the only dated hard copy planner I sell. So I do not sell inserts. Um, the only other version of the hard copy I sell is the undated version which has been updated to reflect um, a modified version of these plan planning layouts. Obviously it's undated, so you don't get the yearly calendar, but everything else is kind of there in a um, adjusted view. So now let me go ahead and say, go back to, let's see, where should we go here? FaceTime, here we go, let me close out of this. Okay, so um, I would absolutely love for you guys to leave me questions, ask me what you need. I know this has been long, right? This is long. This is a full class, you guys. I'm telling you I'm serious about this stuff with you guys. Um, if there's anything you want to see, um, let me know. We could go back into an overhead if you wanted to. I definitely do want you guys to take a look at how beautiful. Oh, I love this year's cover for the Master Planner. Ah! You guys know I love my marble. And I know I do like stripes, but I decided to go with a... What is this? Color blocking. Color blocking, marble blocking. Marble blocking, right? So 2020 Master Planner. Absolutely. Highly recommend these. Even if you're someone who um, like wants to get the bundle, like I think the planning bundle, if you're someone who's like new to planning, the print on demand bundle, I really think is like probably the best way to go because you're getting all three sizes of planners and you can create and customize your own. And I am going to be doing some videos this year, um, doing some setup videos so that you guys can see how I would recommend setting those up. So keep an eye out on my, my channel. Um, but there, for those of you who want to give the planner as a gift, this is a great idea. Like these make wonderful gifts for people, um, for, you know, holidays are coming up. Um, if you have anyone who's in school, like this is a planner that can really be used so many different ways. It really is, as far as I've been able to tell, like really the only true complete functional planning system I've ever seen. And I will argue that point if someone has a different planner and can show it to me. This is a full year of planner inserts, a full, you know, a good amount, full year, really, of what, what most people would need for project planning, the ability to brain dump and organize your thoughts and to pre-plan before you ever get to needing the calendar system. This is what makes the Charmed Life Master Planner, honestly, like the planner, okay? And I know that the book binding turns some people off. That's why I got print on demand, okay? Like I only started doing this because so many people were like, make it a bound planner, make it a bound planner. We don't want to have to print things out. Well, you have an option now, right? Which is why I say that I think the bound master, the unbound, the print on demand master planner might be the better thing for most people. But I think there are some people, if you're like me, like I actually use my book bound. And here I have this cover that I got recently. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I got this on like the other week at Staples. But I actually use my Bookbound Master Planner. It does last me. Here, I'll pull it out of this so you guys can see it. it. does last me a whole year, right? It's a very affordable planner, I think, for what you get. It's sub $30 on Amazon. You can get it shipped to you on Amazon Prime. You have it like the next day or in two days. Uh, oh, I've got a question here. Is the cover matte? Yes! This year's cover is matte. It is Matt. You know, I, I, this, this 2019's cover, this one was glossy. You know, people go back and forth with me on like what they think is better. I love the way the mat feels. And I do believe that the mat actually does not show fingerprints as much as this does. I realize it picks up oils in your hands, but I feel like when you can see things like the reflection, I feel like ends up getting you to see more imperfections, like from touching it. I don't know. That's my opinion. I don't know. Whatever you, whatever you think. But I love the way this one feels. So, um, yeah. So I actually do use my Bound Master Planner. Like, that's my planner of choice because I love having my whole year in one place, right? When you do do the printables, you do need to, like, keep some inserts out and, like, add them as you go, unfortunately, because there's just most, most planners, at least the A5 and personal size planners, right? The Bound ones. Usually you can't get them unless you're doing like a three ring like binder binder, um, most of the more common planners won't hold all of the inserts. But I love how portable this is, how my whole year is in this. Um, everything, everything. I've never run out of project, project plans. Um, 
I use my brain dump every month. I do brainstorming in here in a lot of different ways. Um, I take notes. Really, my notes are probably the least used place, but actually I have like pages that I use for different elements of my life. Um, I even create, I keep like my CEO strategy day is on here. Like I have, a, I, add, I add information sometimes in here via sticker in order to make it easier for myself. Um, and then the index makes it useful if I want to create like a quick reference for anything. I, I know where things are in my planner. So um, yeah, that is the 2020 master planner. Um, no, this isn't. This is the 2020 master planner the most functional planner in the world. I say that, I can say that like really confidently, the most functional bound planner in the entire world. I think that the master planner itself is the most functional planning system. I've never come across a system that is as functional in terms of helping people get a lot of different things done while also providing a structure, but not too much structure. And I think you know what I'm talking about if you've been in the planning community for a long time. A lot of times the more functional styles of planners end up being too form-like. It's too much like a business form, like you have to put your this information here, you have to put that information here. It's still a flexible enough system for you to create what you want. But, and it all works together, all the pieces, all the inserts, all the spreads work together, but it's not too formal. Like, it's not too formal. And Tanya says, I can say that too. Thank you, Tanya. I mean, I'm telling you, people who, I know that this is like, sometimes it's scary to people, like the term life master planner, because there's like a lot of inserts. It's a big planner. The bound one is like, that's it. Like, it almost seems like, wait, what is this? Like, it doesn't seem like a planner necessarily, because it looks like a book. And that's what I love about the book binding. Like, people have asked me to bind the planner into like ring bound or not ring bound, but um, like coil bound or like the spiral bounds and things like that. No, do you know how humongous this would be if I did that? Like it would be humongous and I wouldn't use it. So at the end of the day, my litmus test for whether or not I put something out is, is Alexis going to use it? Okay, if Alexis will use it. And I I tend to be both very picky and also very go, go with the flow with things. And I will say that I used to be one of those people who was incredibly OCD with their planner in terms of like my planner had to be perfect. And if I wrote something in and I had to erase it, I panicked. I'm like, where's the whiteout? And oh, the whiteout is getting clumpy and I don't like the way this looks and I want to rip out all the pages and I want to put new pages in because I want it to look perfect. Whoa, that sense of perfectionism has really flown out the window with this planner because I feel like you don't have any other option. You don't have any other option than to just use this planner and to live or die by this planner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the options. It's not super expensive. It's not like, I don't like to say other names of other planners just because I don't want to feel like anyone's calling out. But I know those of you who have been in the planner community, you know that there are planners out there that cost like 50, 60, $70 because you can like customize a cover. Really? It's paper. It's paper. Like, I can't justify even, I don't care if this, like, vacuums your house. You know what I mean? It's paper. At the end of the year, you are going to throw this out or archive it just for future reference. Like, really? $75? Because you can put my name on a cover? Think about it, you guys. Think about it. Capitalism at its best. <laughs> I mean, it works, right? It works. But, um, yeah, I know this is my planner. And it's easy for me to like compliment it all day and all night. But, you know, I wouldn't be using it if I didn't love it. If I didn't love it, I would change it. And I do change the things that I need to change year after year. Like that monthly tracker that I was just like, you know what? I get bored of using the habit tracker. I want a expense page back or I want a page that I could use as an expense page, even if it's not exactly an expense page, which is where that idea of the tracker came from. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Girl, been there, done that, over. Exactly. Like, I don't have to feel bad if something happens to this. I don't have to feel bad. I don't have to wait. <clears throat> I don't have to wait weeks and weeks for this to come in the mail. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I have backups with me. Like, I always have, like, a whole bunch that I buy <clears throat> to have on hand for myself, and I give them out to people. But, like, this, if something were to happen to your master planner, like, you can have another one in two days from Amazon. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how many other planners are like that? You know? How many? I, I want to really want to know. Like, is it really, is the extra money to emboss a cover, like, really worth it to you that 
you're going to spend so much money on a planner. Um, oh, something else that's new this year, because I do listen to you guys, contrary to popular opinion, is all the planners got a this planner belongs to page, right? I know you guys were really concerned about that. <laughs> and something I have talked about on Instagram, but I have probably not mentioned here yet, is I am going to, for those of you who purchased the bound planner, there is like a, um, a special bonus if you go to yourmasterplanner.com. Um, and you can get it too if you if you put in your order information, if you buy the regular planner as well, uh, the, the, you know, the print-on-demand planner. Um, but I'm gonna be changing my bonus now for this. Like I'm gonna, so you can get the other one right now, but soon I'm probably gonna, I wanna redesign the bonus. I just like to make new things every year for you guys. And I'm like, how can I make this even more functional? How can I add to your experience of this planner? Et cetera, et cetera. So, oh, oh so many more comments I didn't pull down. <laughs> so I said I'd cry if I lost it. Yeah, I mean, you'd cry if you lost your planner, but you know what? It's like, if you lost like a $75 planner versus a $28 planner, like, come on. Um, and someone's talking about archiving their planner for tax purposes for their business, which is also very good. So... Yeah. Okay. So does anyone have any questions? I hope you guys enjoyed this concept. Did you guys enjoy this concept of the productivity edit? Um, I was really excited about this. So someone says Alexis. Someone would like to hear more about energy and productivity. I will. I will talk more about energy and productivity. Not today. Probably in a future video because we'll be here for the rest of the year. In fact, I think, okay, so I want to tell you guys something about, um, I'm probably going to have to make a video and explain this a little bit in more detail so that people know because there's only so many of you who will see this or get to this point in the video if you're watching the replay, which is I think for this fall, in order to be more intentional and to have like a more slow pace, I'm going to relinquish my need to be on a YouTube schedule. So that doesn't mean I'm not going to make YouTube videos, but I would like to not feel like I have to put them up at a certain day and a certain time. I'm a little bit right now in the mindset of the Shane Dawson, right? If you guys are familiar with Shane Dawson, he's like a very popular YouTuber who's basically gotten so popular that he is allowed to do whatever he wants on YouTube and skirt the rules of YouTube. There's no rules on YouTube or expectations, but he is quality over quantity now with his videos where he dedicates time to putting together a great video series or something like that and publishes it and only publishes a few series a year. So I would like to do something similar, not in terms of like documentary series that he does, like he does, but in terms of at least for this fall, I want to only put out videos when I feel like I have something really worthwhile to share with you, something really well put together. I don't want to feel like I'm putting out videos just to fill content because that is totally not going to add this idea of being intentional and slow and really focusing on what I want to get done. I also would love to be able to take a step back from YouTube in some ways, you know, and maybe put less content out over this fall season because I would like to maybe do some more projects like book things and maybe do some things with you guys one-on-one -on -one and maybe do like a more private experience with those of you who are interested in things like that. I realize that's not for everybody, but I'm kind of getting to the point with my business and the way that I want to create is, you know, I want to, I think that blogging, I love blogging. I actually missed blogging. When I got rid of blogging, I was like so burnt out because I would blog three days a week and write all of this content. But I think if I go back to the writing of the blogging and do less of the videos, I think that's going to be an easier way for me to get out a lot of content and ideas because creating a video takes a lot more time than just writing a blog post and taking some pictures, right? And doing some photography. So I think that blogging will help me to get more ideas out, ideas about things like energy and, you know, vibration and things like that so that you guys are actually able to get like a more concrete information and strategies and things like that on a regular basis because I can make a video you know it would take me it easily takes me three to four times as long to create a video than it does for me to just write out even like a 2,000 word article for my blog so I'm gonna take a step back from YouTube in terms of probably gonna create less content 
probably the content that I do create, I might do more lives like this so that we can just like talk and interact and like have more fun together and really get more value. But I want to start producing my content in terms of blog posts, that will be like the regular reliable content. And then YouTube will be like the icing on the cake where I'm sharing with you guys things that are more visual for sure and things where we, you know, can talk more like this. Yeah, so that's it. Like a monthly seasonal video series. Would, yeah, that's what I want. I would love to be able to go like live with you guys like once a month and then maybe put out like maybe one or two other videos that are produced um, in terms of like really getting intentional about what I'm sharing with you guys because for me and for you I know that my videos must be getting a little monotonous about me talking about the same things now the reason I talk about the same things is because I know that everybody is not doing the fundamental things right because when you start nailing the fundamental things you're going to actually start seeing that you need Alexis less <laughs> So still needing me means I'm not doing, you know, you're not doing the fundamentals and I'm not doing my job well enough hammering this home with you guys. So um, I think that blogging is going to help. Like if I can start creating content that way and sharing more ideas that way, it's just easier. When I have a blog post idea, if I want to sit and write it, I can write it real quick and publish it to you guys. Whereas I can't do the same thing when it comes to video. Good. I'm so glad that you're saying that some, okay, so I'm getting comments here, just in case for people watching this, that blogs are better because you can go back and read it faster and bookmark it, et cetera. And I agree. So I think that, I, I know there was a period of time there where everyone's like, blogging's dead. Blogging is not dead. Bah humbug. If you're a fashion blogger, yeah, maybe blogging is dead. Go to Instagram. But not when you're someone like me who like is a prolific writer, okay? Like I, you guys may remember my blog posts like I think it's so long, you guys. Like I could easily just sit there and write 2,500 words and like an hour has passed. And I'm like, this is such good information. I should write a book, Alexis, which I would like to do as well. So, okay. Um, I really have to go to the bathroom, okay? I'm just gonna be totally honest with you guys. I have to go pee pee so bad right now. And maybe you guys do too. I've been drinking water. I've been drinking coffee. I had a coffee and a water before this even started and like a Gatorade. So I think we're gonna call this quits for now. Thank you to all of you guys who are still on with me live. I, I lost where the numbers are for how many people are here, but I know oh, there you are. Um, so there are still plenty of you here with me live. I would, again, um, I highly recommend if anyone enjoyed this concept and this concept of being the editor of your life. I think I really want to take this concept a little further. I'll probably talk about some more, maybe do some blog posts, but this productivity edit workbook, if you liked this, if you want to get these worksheets, um, please make sure to snag this. It is very affordable. I try to keep everything, you guys, as affordable as possible for you guys, but also in alignment with, you know, the effort that I put in and the energy that I put in. But honestly, all of these things that I put out for you guys, I'm so happy with this. Oh, I'm so excited to actually do this myself um, because this is going to be something that I'm going to start doing on a seasonal basis, right? It's going to probably replace my quarterly boring quarterly business planning, right? Because this is a way more fun. I think, did you guys think this was fun? I thought this was way more fun talking about how I'm going to be the first person to self-publish and get on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, so yeah, that's what you guys can expect from me. Probably more live content. That's it. YouTube lives, maybe a few published uh, uh, videos, more me talking on a blog, and I'm not going to do a podcast. I've come to the decision and clarity after trying those audio episodes. Thank you guys for sticking with me through those. Podcast is not for Alexis. I would rather just write it. I'd rather just publish to you a 5,000 word blog post than bother with podcasting. Sorry, it's how I feel. I know you can't listen to it in the car, but honestly, you shouldn't be listening to podcasts in the car that are really informative because you should really be sitting and focusing <laughs> like honestly like this isn't like a news podcast like this isn't this is like I I drop some serious knowledge on you guys in my content so it's not something that you should just be listening to passively it's not entertainment I consider it education and I really do think that people should be focused and present when they're listening to things like that so they really digest it Okay, so thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Who else? Oh, before we go, you guys, you know what I'm doing immediately? Okay, immediately after this, I'm running to my bathroom. After that, after all this is all done and cleaned up, who else is watching? I have two shows that I've like, been dying to watch. They just released. 
The Dark Crystal on Netflix. Who else is watching The Dark Crystal on Netflix? Do not spoil it. Do not spoil it if you have, okay, in the comments. And Carnival Row on Amazon Prime. They both dropped yesterday. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I've been, I've forced myself to wait. This was a situation where I forced myself to wait until I was done this class. And now I'm literally going to sit on my couch with my dogs and watch, binge watch shows for the rest of the weekend in through Labor Day. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Let me know. Reach out to me if you guys are also watching those. Again, please share this class. I would so appreciate it. Get the productivity edit. Last day on that master planner bundle sale for the digital is today. Get it for sure. I think that's the best idea that I ever had bundling all three together. Yeah, I'm so excited about the Goonies, girl. Did I even have to like guess Goonies? Of course you're interested in the Dark Crystal. Like you're like me, you probably. Oh, the OA, I'm already. Do you know they canceled the OA? Like they're not doing a third season. I'm so devastated. I think we need to start a movement because uh, the OA was another one of the shows that it's on Netflix, if you guys don't know, that let me tell you guys, when I tell you that the OA, as much as it seems like a crazy show that you're just kind of watching, there are so many actual metaphysical principles that are in that movie, in that show, in that series, that I'm like, it's like the most educational thing on TV right now, the OA. Like, it really is. Like, it's crazy. I, I The second season went nuts, but was so good and had even more metaphysics in it than the first one did. So I totally recommend the OA for sure. And Dark, if you also like metaphysic things and time is a construct, Dark. Dark. I think it's like, it's foreign, but you can, it's dubbed in like English. The OA, I've already watched it. Yeah, already. All, both seasons. All I have to say is octopus. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about if you watch the second season. Whoa, mind blown octopus. Um, so, yeah. So, um, let's see. What else? I know other people were saying something. Dark Crystal. So Dark Crystal, you guys know Dark Crystal, the movie from the like 80s or whatever, Henson stuff. Um, they made it a cheap, it's a series now. They're doing like a series on Netflix and it just launched. And then Carnival Row is the one with Orlando Bloom and Cara DeVelgne, I don't know how to say her name. And it looks crazy cool as well. It's like fairies. <laughs> Um, yeah, save the OA is, the, yeah, is a hashtag. We need to do this. The movement started. Good, 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 good. Because it's really, I don't know what, I don't really know what Netflix is thinking. Like they, they have a lot, like a lot of content on Netflix is good or meh. You know what I mean? The OA I thought was spectacular. Um, dark is spectacular. Um, you know what else? I think they canceled the Hemlock Grove. That was a little weird, but I liked it because I like fantasy sort of things, kind of fantasy wolves and whatever, werewolves, vampires, stuff like that. I think they, that was gone too. But yeah. Um, okay. I really, really need to end this because I'm going to explode. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Remember, if there's one thing you guys need to remember all this is that you are the editor of your life, okay? Seriously, embody your inner Anna Wintour and start looking at your schedule and looking at the way you spend your time and energy and thinking like, would Anna Wintour want me to do this, <laughs> right? Like, what would Jesus do? What would Anna do? I don't like to say things like that because I think it's disrespectful to Jesus and Christianity. But I think you guys know what I mean by that. All of the best intentions when I say that. But I think we all need to embody our inner inner Anna Wintour and really get, really think about like what you are risking, what you are leaving on the table, what you're ignoring because you're giving something else that really doesn't deserve your time and energy, time and energy. I like to be a people pleaser as much as the next gal does. Um, but it does not really serve you, right? You don't create a beautiful life for yourself of your dreams by people pleasing. You just don't, okay? Save that nugget in your head. I'll be back eventually. More lives. Reach out to me if you guys want to do, a, like I'm serious about the book thing. If you guys want to do like a book group, let me know. I'll figure something out. Um, I think that would be awesome because I'm really focused, especially if I had you guys with me. I think I'd probably be so focused. Um, on 
making sure I got it written. And then I have people to early read, right? Help me early read. That's what we can all be for each other. Early readers, helping with preliminary editing, giving each other feedback on covers and stuff like that. I think that would be awesome if we could put a little group together like that. So reach out to me. Email would be the best, um, but something not just a comment in the live because I think that goes away or it's harder for me to see through all those. So yep, reach out to me. I'll see you guys later. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it. Love you guys. See you later. Namaste. May the force be with you. Uh, peace out.